what's this? No. It's a book about pirates with a treasure map. No, I don't think so. I wish that I had seen through all your lies. Oh, start from the beginning, not the middle. And so I decided to pick up my pen to relate the most disturbing episode of my life thus far. It all began early one morning in 1898 when Sherlock Holmes invited me to accompany him on a visit to the Marquis of Conningham. Watson, my dear fellow, we can now go and inform the Marquis that we have found the Samoan necklace and very much faster than Inspector Baines too, which pleases me. Have you really solved the theft, Holmes? And so quickly? I have indeed, Watson. And believe me, it was completely unnecessary to spread out all over London, as our friend Baines thought was best. He likes to boast that his methods are equal to mine, but once again the outcome has contradicted him. After all these years of accompanying you upon your investigations, I thought that by now I should be reasonably capable of following your train of thought. But in this particular case, I must admit that I don't understand anything at all. Ah, you see, but you do not observe, Watson. There lies the difference. It is a matter of course. A matter of course? In the middle of the night, when everyone is fast asleep, the service bell within that room rings out and alerts the servants. They dress quickly and come running. But the door is locked and there is a strong smell of burning from within. A few seconds later, the master of the house himself, the robbed Marchioness's husband, the Marquis of Conningham, arrives and unlocks the door using the sole key. A fire has started inside the room, but they have managed to arrive in time to put it out. It is at that moment that the Marquis realises that the famous Samoan necklace, which had been safe within its glass cabinet only a few hours earlier, has now disappeared. In order to explain, let us confirm my theory before the arrival of Inspector Baines. This window was cut with a diamond, a clean, discreet piece of work. This is where the necklace was. See how tiny the hole is, and not one fingerprint upon the window. A mark undoubtedly made by a diamond. Someone tried to cut the glass, but he was interrupted. Therefore, the thief tried to escape through the window, but he was interrupted. All the windows are locked. They've not been forced.
Let us examine the crumpled scores that have fallen off the piano. These sooty prints were left by a tiny hand. I don't understand why these music scores are covered with soot. It must have fallen from the chandelier. Not very well kept, this aquarium. I can see a dead fish floating on the surface. All the windows are locked. They've not been forced. All the windows are locked. They've not been forced. The chest wasn't opened. The necklace wasn't in it. Footprints! You are not going to get on your knees to examine them. There is no need. It is soot. The servants must have trodden in it while they were putting out the fire. The fire started here, just beneath the bell pull. Whoever pulled the cord would have had his feet in the fire, unless it was pulled before the fire started. Strange. There are some objects here that have been knocked over. Heading towards his chosen escape route, probably the window, the thief knocked over the stool, which then caught fire. But why didn't he try to put the fire out at once? These documents are not very interesting, even though they're addressed to the Minister of Maritime Affairs. The Marquis himself! This draft screen makes an ideal hiding place. As the theft was committed at night, I conclude that the thief hid himself behind the draft screen and waited until he was alone in the room. Strange, there aren't any prints, yet I'm sure that the thief hid here. When the servants arrived at the door, having been alerted by the bell, they saw evidence of the theft and the fire, but they didn't see the thief. This door is very hard to force. The Marquis is the only person to have the key. The thief could not get out through here until eventually, when the door was opened by the servants. Ah, Mr. Holmes, you're already here. Good morning, Inspector. You've arrived just in time. <laughs> Scotland Yard arrives like the cavalry, always in the nick of time. Ah, but I know that satisfied expression, Mr. Holmes. Have you already solved the case? It's possible. We have retraced the thief's rather unusual footsteps. He is a true acrobat. But what I cannot understand is that when the servants entered the room, there was no one to be seen. An acrobat, perhaps, but an invisible one? <laughs> I do not think so. The only explanation is that the thief escaped before the servants arrived. I don't know how, but there is no other way. Half a point for the doctor, nil for the inspector. I am pleased to see that you find the situation amusing, Mr. Holmes. Very well then, explain. Dr. Watson was correct when he mentioned acrobatics, but he is mistaken about the nature of the acrobat. As for you, Baines, you're quite incorrect, as the thief was in the room when the servants entered. Explain, for heaven's sake, Mr. Holmes. Watson, how could a thief be missed in the middle of eight men? I don't know. Because he is very small? Stop teasing us, Holmes. Exactly. Because he is small. Small and remarkably agile. You're thinking of a monkey? And a trained monkey at that. Without a doubt, a Leontopicathus rosalia from Central America. 
The animal had been hidden inside the room for several hours, calmly awaiting the signal from his master. Once night had fallen and the room was empty, a high-frequency whistle alerted the monkey that it was time to begin the procedure for which he had been trained. The monkey emerged from his hiding place and used the point of a diamond to open the glass cabinet and steal the necklace. He headed across to the window by the chimney, but knocked over the stool, which in turn knocked aside the fire guard and started the fire. The frightened monkey jumped from the chimney by swinging from the bell pool, thus alerting the house servants. He then went to the window and began to use his diamond to cut a hole, but was interrupted by the staff trying to gain entry via the door, and he panicked again. He ran across the piano, scattering the music scores onto the floor, before hiding inside the chandelier, knocking over a candle. Finally, the servants and the Marquis entered the room, leaving the door open while they put out the fire. It was during the confusion that our agile little thief made his escape through the doorway. As simple as that. A brilliant explanation! Bravo, Holmes! And the necklace? I can see it from here, my friends. It's right in front of us. We have searched the room from top to bottom, Holmes. How were we unable to find it? because we paid insufficient attention to the only victim of this affair. What victim? No one is dead? Yes, Watson. A poor goldfish, whose destiny was to die, crushed by one of the most precious necklaces in England. The aquarium is just beneath the chandelier. I understand. The little monkey had likely hung the necklace around its neck and lost it when he leapt from the chandelier. The jewels fell into the aquarium, where they remain now. Marquis, here is your necklace, intact, just a little wet. Mr. Holmes! This brilliant demonstration does credit to your reputation. Thank you so much, Marquis. Do you wish to verify the authenticity of your jewel? No, I recognize it. I have spent many hours admiring it, you know. Good. I will return it to its box and... Inspector! A bank has just been held up! You must follow me at once! Orders of Scotland Yard! What times? Sirs, duty calls. My regards, Marquis. And well done again, Mr. Holmes. There, the necklace is in its box. We've lost enough time here. Let's go home, Watson. Ah, very well, as you wish. A good day to you, Marquis. With pleasure, gentlemen. And once again, thank you. This morning's newspaper. Holmes, have you read this article about you? No, Watson, not yet, and I won't have time to. Read it before you leave. It's outrageous. If you insist. Read the paper, Holmes.
Prince Woodville, French culinary expert and bagpipe player, might be our next king. That's not so shocking, my dear fellow. You know exactly to which article I'm referring, Holmes. How can Farley dare to tarnish your reputation like that? You know, Watson, that wherever glory walks, jealousy is bound to follow. As for the forgery of the necklace, I suspect that we shall soon be enlightened in this regard. Come in, Inspector Baines. The door's open. Ah, Mr. Holmes. How did you know I was here? You are one of our rare visitors who avoids the second-to-last step of the stairs, which creaks dreadfully. And if I add the clinking of the handcuffs at your belt, to what do we owe the pleasure of your visit, Inspector? Have you read that, Rag? Inspector, can you explain this slander? Has the necklace of the Samoas really been replaced by a fake? I don't know how the reporter got hold of the information, but it's true. About the necklace, of course. I wouldn't permit myself to question the integrity and honesty of Mr. Holmes. The necklace is a forgery? Impossible! I saw the Marquis authenticated before my very eyes, before Holmes returned it to its place. Mr. Holmes, the Marquis believes Osmond Farley's theory. I shouldn't be surprised if the reporter isn't behind all this slander about you. He's a freelancer, well known for his explosive and subjective articles. In any case, the Marquis assures us that you were the last person to have the necklace in your hands. Let's return to the Marquis's house, Holmes. I'm sure that we'll have no trouble in taking apart this theory. It is unnecessary. Such allegations collapse on their own, like one of Mrs. Hudson's souffles. Let us leave the police to solve this problem and turn our attention to the matters in hand. Perhaps you are right, Holmes. Inspector, I assume that you have the fake necklace with you. It's why you're here. Your superiors would like me to examine it. Indeed. They would like you to confirm or deny putting this fake in the box. Can't that wait? I must go to the house of Lord Peregrine Maitland, the Bishop of Knightsbridge. And the Marchioness? She is beside herself. Without the necklace, her marriage is compromised. It is the principal item of the young woman's dowry. What a lovely marriage! Holmes, forgive me for insisting, but don't you want to examine the fake jewellery? Watson, I have an appointment, and it's out of the question that I arrive late. It will only take you a couple of minutes. You really must quell the suspicions put forward in this appalling article. If you will allow me, Inspector? Be my guest. Very well. These three pearls are of poor quality. This pearl is a different color. This pearl is too small. It is not in its place here. Too many defects. This necklace is a fake. This is nothing but a vulgar copy, and at a glance it would appear that the forger has intended for it to be seen as such. How could we have been fooled by such a blatant imitation? I don't understand. Yes, how is it possible? Holmes, do you have a theory about this? I have absolutely no idea. You insisted that I examine the necklace, and I have done so. Now it is important that I keep my appointment. I'm sure, Inspector, that you will throw some light on this affair. Oh, Holmes! You may accompany me, Watson, if you care to do so. Goodbye, gentlemen. I'll keep you informed as to my inquiries. Goodbye, Inspector. You mentioned a bishop, didn't you? Are we going to his home? Yes, the Bishop of Knightsbridge. I put his address on our map of London on my desk. Would you get it for me, please? All right, Holmes. And this is how my dear friend and colleague treats his client's letters. This bust was used to fool Colonel Moran during the case of the empty house. The work table, where Holmes analyzes things. 
Holmes's homemade analyzer. I have found your map. General practitioner? That won't be of any use to me. Here is where I write my stories about Holmes's cases. And I've got work to do. Hospitals and dispensaries in London. Female anatomy. Hmm, I should put this book somewhere else. The police? Already? How did you know? May we see the Bishop of Knightsbridge? Yes. Yes, of course. But come in. What has happened, Reverend? What? I... I don't know. It was last night, I think. I only just arrived, and I have made this macabre discovery. My God! How horrible! I haven't called anyone. How did you know that? Holmes! Look! The bishop, appallingly mutilated. How dreadful! Mutilated! And killed! He was such a good man. How could anyone be so brutal? Look at him. He is barely recognizable now. How could any of God's children be responsible for that? They were evidently unworthy children, Reverend. Now do please try to calm yourself and focus, because we will need your assistance. Do you have any idea as to the motive behind this? I haven't had time to do an inventory, but nothing appears to have been stolen. And anyway, His Excellency didn't own anything of great value. I don't know what else I can tell you. Note this down, please, Doctor. Doctor? But you aren't the police? No, Reverend. I am Sherlock Holmes, and this is Dr. Watson. We are here at the request of the Bishop. In that case, I must ask you to leave, and not to touch anything. I must get in touch with the authorities without further delay. Uh, Reverend, when the inspectors of Scotland Yard find themselves at a dead end, which they quite often do, I assure you, then they turn to me for help. If you will allow us to continue our investigation, then you shall have the answers to all of your questions. Out of the question! I don't even know you! I'm going to call the police, whether you like it or not. It would be better for everyone, Reverend, if you kept your temper. Watson, are you taking notes? This affair promises to be a complex one, therefore we must not overlook the slightest detail. Yes, Holmes. I am keeping a meticulous set of notes. I have created a very clever deduction board. One thing we can be sure of at the moment is that this crime was not for gain. The Reverend has informed us that nothing valuable was stolen, and indeed it would seem that the Bishop had nothing of any worth to take. Very good, Watson. Do continue. You can see by his expression that he suffered terribly. His mouth is covered in blood, and I can make out strips of skin between his teeth. His chest has been lacerated, I would say, with a very sharp and fine blade.
His stomach is covered in scratches. Quite evidently, they weren't made recently. So, these wounds were not made by his murderers. The fingers have been crushed and violently struck. The fingers have been crushed and violently struck. A piece of rope that was used to tie up that poor man. His forearms have been ripped. Pieces of skin have been torn off. What do you think, Watson? I'd say that he was eaten alive. Yet I've noticed a curious degeneration of the skin tissue around the wounds. My dear friend, everything points to this man having gnawed at his own forearms. That's unbelievable, Holmes. These burns are terrible. A finger. Apparently, it doesn't belong to the Bishop of Knightsbridge. How dreadful! This poor man was tied just below the knees. To stop him from walking, certainly, but mostly to free his feet. His feet have been burned. Hmm. My first impression is that he wears a size 9 shoe. You? But what does it matter, Holmes? My God, Holmes, this man was horribly tortured. Something is missing here. Oh, yes? And what might that be? His shoes. Watson, his shoes are missing. This stove is filled to overflowing. A bottle of whiskey. I can make out fingerprints stained with blood and dirt. There is blood on this paperweight. This paperweight was used to crush the victim's fingers. A broken bottle of whiskey. However, the Bishop of Knightsbridge was known for his sobriety. It would seem that the brutes who tortured the Bishop to death were intoxicated with alcohol. It's a silice designed to bruise the person wearing it. The Bishop wore it as repentance. A whip? No, it is a discipline for self-flagellation. This very pious man must have had the habit of mortifying his flesh as a means of repentance. Reverend, I'm missing something, an implement with which to open this chest. Could you tell me where to find it? No, go to the devil! What are you afraid of, Reverend? What is inside the chest? I'm not afraid of anything. In fact, I do have the necessary implements, but if I have to give them to anyone, it will be to a representative of the law and no one else. A broken file and blood near the neck. What a strange smell. Phew, chemical components, I think. Watch where you're putting your feet, Watson. Have you noticed these prints upon the ground? Well, yes, those muddy marks. See here, Watson, footprints can often provide more vital information than the very best of informants. Yes, if you know how to make them talk, that is. It's child's play, Watson. We will begin by excluding the contaminating prints, which are yours and mine from where we came in, and those of our dear Reverend, who was so impatient to call the police. Hobnail boots like those worn by labourers. A fragment of stone. Peculiar. Hobnail boots like those worn by labourers. Hobnail boot. Hobnail. 
This print came from an expensive pair of shoes, and it seems recent. It is not a laborer's shoe. Size 9. Size nine and a half. Size nine and a half. Size nine. Size nine. Size nine. Perfect. We now know that there were three crooks. Strange but true. One of the crooks was wearing a different pair of shoes when he left here. Therefore, we have three men who came in and left again, but one of them was wearing a different pair of shoes from the ones which he came in with. So, all we have to do is look for a workman who likes Italian shoes. I cannot leave now. A surgical scalpel covered in blood. There isn't any doubt the wounds on the bishop were administered with this scalpel. Closed. The veranda door hasn't been forced. Strange. Reverend, might I have the key? No! You have no authority here. Let me call the police. Perhaps we should listen to him, Holmes. Perhaps you should let me get on with this, Watson. The picture of Peregrine Maitland, commander of the infantry brigade of Her Majesty's Guards at Waterloo. The Bishop of Knightsbridge has the same name as his ancestor, an illustrious family. This metal rod is for fastening the chilies. This door has not been forced. Where does it lead, Reverend? To His Excellency's room. There is just a mattress and a stool. The Bishop's bedroom. It is very austere. Nothing in particular here. It is impossible to get out. I cannot leave now. You have no right to search here. Let us look at our deduction board, Watson. Thank you. 
It is evident that the Bishop of Knightsbridge's killers were after something specific, and that they did not find it. Reverend, I shall ask you one more time. Open the chest. The item they were seeking must still be inside. It is unlikely that they will let this matter rest. They will most certainly return to finish what they started. And I am telling you once more, the chest is locked and shall remain so. Very well. We have reached an impasse. You are a stubborn man, Reverend. Watson, accompany our friend to the police station and return with Inspector Baines. Baines and no one else. I shall wait for you here. Go. Alone at last. Now I can continue my investigation. This lock should be easy to pick. Let's see. This lock should... This lock should be easy to pick. Let's see. There we are. It is simplicity itself. There isn't anything much in this room. It must be used as a reading or meditation room. An ink stain, quite fresh. This stain is just on the edge of the rug. Let's see. There is nothing on the floor. Yet the ink must have soaked through the rug. This inkwell was tipped over recently. An ink stain. The ink stain on the floor comes from the ink on the rug, but they are not in the same place. Someone has moved the rug recently. That is curious. There is something strange on the floor. Certain stones have been marked out, just like a chessboard. That is curious. There is something strange. I need something. Apparently, someone wanted to hide this statue. This horse resembles a large chess piece. There is a message underneath this statue. Let's see. This message was written by a woman, but for whom was it intended? Interesting, this chess game.
This last piece should be the good one. It will have to be pulled free. I need something. packet of letters addressed to the Reverend. They were written by a woman who mentions his illegitimate children. Their affair isn't official. Perfect. I have you now, my wayward Reverend. Watson, you were gone a terribly long time, and Inspector Baines isn't with you? I'm afraid not, Holmes. We were unable to find him. Dr. Watson would not allow me to contact any inspector other than this Baines. What manners! I am a man of the church. My dear Reverend, I notice that you are a chess lover. I trust you will excuse me, but I am never able to resist the appeal of a half-finished game. You are an expert at chess. Very well, then. What do you want now? As you might have guessed, resolving your small chess problem has allowed me to discover some very interesting letters. Letters? What do they say? Reverend, why hide these letters here and run the risk of the bishop finding them? Holmes, what's in the letters? Not now, Watson. Where else could I have hidden them? My own chambers are too austere. They could offer no cover. I knew, however, that His Excellency, may he rest in peace, would not notice my game. The contents of the Bishop of Knightsbridge's chest interest me greatly. Give me the elements you hold, Reverend. Out of the question. With the Bishop no more, you are therefore the Apostolic Director of the Diocese, are you not? Well, yes, but only until someone else is appointed. I am certain that the Honourable Bishop of York, whom I have the privilege of knowing well enough for him to listen to what I have to say, would recognise your qualities for the post. If I receive new responsibilities, it will be through my faith and devotion, nothing else. I am a gentleman, and it would distress me to be obliged to pass this correspondence across to your superiors. Holmes, I know that the end justifies the means, but allow me to express some reservations about how you are proceeding. You say you're a gentleman, but I hear nothing but the words of a blackmailer. The stems that you are looking for are scattered about this room. Manage by yourself. You have no right to search here.
You have won. Evidently, as I always do. What are you able to tell us about the Bishop of Knightsbridge's last days? Did anyone come to visit him? Did he seem worried, anxious? Do not omit the smallest detail. His nephew came to see him yesterday at His Excellency's request. I found this visit a little peculiar because the young man rarely visits his uncle. Do you know why that might be? Were they on bad terms? I don't think so. It's rather a consequence of his work. The young man is employed within the archive section of the Royal Library, which doesn't leave him with a lot of free time. Do you know the reason for his summons? No, but the conversation was very heated. It only lasted for a few minutes and ended with the nephew in a terrible rage. Interesting. I've answered your questions. Will you now let me contact the authorities? I'm afraid not, Reverend. Not just yet. All right, now we can open the safe. Now I can open the chest. Here we are. I am eager to discover what remarkable treasure could justify such an act of barbarity. Extraordinary! This chest is impenetrable. How is it possible? No one other than the bishop should be able to open it. You open the chest with disconcerting ease, Holmes. I've seen and heard quite enough. This time you won't stop me. Catch him, Watson. What the? But why? Run, Watson! Hurry! He's escaped. I hope that your motivations are founded, Holmes. I don't much like skirting around the edges of the law like this. It is annoying. Let's leave without delay. What have you found in the chest, Holmes? What in there is so precious for these men to commit such terrible acts? The Reverend was telling the truth. Nothing important was locked inside the chest, apart from a few religious items which are hardly worth stealing. So, we haven't made any headway. Perhaps the police will. By the time the police arrive, we shall be a long way from here, Watson. We are leaving. What should we do next, Holmes? Let us return to Baker Street as quickly as possible. We have crossed London at a breakneck speed. We could have knocked someone over, and naturally I had to pay the cabbie out of my own pocket. Watson, stop complaining. We have to analyse the clues found at the bishop's house. I need something. I have cut a small piece off the rope. That should be enough. A lot of fragments of black stone are wedged into this rope. Their colour seems unnatural, but they are too small for me to examine them. Black and damp earth. This rope is only worn on one side. This rope is... This fragment of stone is very smooth, and it seems to be of a peculiar quality. I shall have to strip it with one of my products. Mm. 
This stone appears to be the same as those found within the rope's fibers. This stone is granite covered in black paint. The fragments found in the rope and this piece of granite come from the same place. There is something written on this scalpel. I should clean it. No, I can't do that. Ah, I can make out WCCH. What do the initials stand for? How many hospitals are there in the Whitechapel area, Watson? If we count public dispensaries, enough to keep us busy for an entire month. Did this scalpel come from a hospital? Yes, as the initials WCCH engraved upon it show us. We must think on how best to deal with this. We do not have the time to investigate every hospital in Whitechapel. Tooth marks, rather deep ones, I'd say of incisors and a canine. Black and damp earth under the nail, interesting. I must compare the samples of earth that I found. Fragments of skin, a phalanx. This finger wasn't cut off, it was ripped off. Bite marks on this severed finger. I am afraid of the significance. The thieves didn't get what they wanted. When they were faced with the bishop's refusal to cooperate, one of the gang shook his finger at him to indicate that he was responsible for his unfortunate state. And the poor man, whose head was the only part of him not bound by ropes, bit the finger violently enough to sever it. An uncommonly savage act. Watson, I am certain that when we have explained the reasons behind this sudden bestiality, we will have revealed a larger part of the mystery. I must compare the samples of earth that I found. And if I mixed this earth with another substance... Now it must all be stirred. I can't do that. The samples of earth taken from beneath the fingernail and from the ropes originate from the same place. How do you know? It took just a little water to analyze the consistency. The soil has retained its moisture, even though there hasn't been rain in London for over a week. This soil could come from the bank of a river or somewhere where the evaporation is slower. A mine, perhaps, or a trench. The banks of the Thames are clay soil, unlike our samples, so we can rule that out. The nearest mines are a dozen miles away, so I would rule that out also. I would therefore conclude your last theory to be nearer the mark. A trench? A pit. Watson, bring me your register of the London hospitals. Studying the scalpel has given you an idea, then? Indeed. I'll get it.
Read the paper, Holmes. General practitioner? That won't be of any use to me. Hospitals and dispensaries in London. I have found my book, Holmes. Good. Uh, put it on the work table, will you? Female anatomy. Hmm. I should put this book somewhere else. I have found my book, Holmes. Good. Uh, put it on the work table, will you? Here is the section showing Whitechapel. I made several notations on these pages during our investigation into the Ripper, which might prove useful. All we need to do is to find a hospital or a public dispensary near a location where pits have been dug and black granite has been used. It's simplicity itself. I haven't finished my analysis. I need something. Poison, and apparently very virulent. Poison, discreet, efficient, and only detectable via a thorough post-mortem. Have you been able to isolate the active components, Holmes? Not with any certainty. This toxic substance surpasses my own knowledge in the field. It is without doubt the work of an expert chemist. A chemist and a criminal. As you say, please find my monograph on poisoners of the last 30 years.
According to these documents, Hans Schielmann, known as the Rat Killer, was considered the greatest specialist in chemical poison in the world. Is he at liberty? Happily, no. He has been held in the high security wing of London's Westgate prison for many years now. Then he cannot be the one who concocted the poison. Don't dismiss him too quickly, Watson. According to Scotland Yard, the man is exceptionally intelligent. For the greatest criminals, prison is but a mere obstacle. Let's plan a little visit to see Mr. Shieldman tomorrow. I haven't finished my analysis. I haven't finished my analysis. Perfect. Well done, Watson. Our board is finished. It confirms that the bishop's murderers work for one person, who, amongst other things, possesses a very sophisticated poison. They therefore act for someone more educated than themselves. Now I can make the right decision. I haven't finished my analysis.
I haven't finished my analysis. I haven't finished my analysis. Public Dispensary Number 4661. It's just opposite the Whitechapel Street Cemetery. Yes, Watson. The murderer with the missing finger must work in the cemetery, or at least visit it. He could have taken a rope, one of the type they use to lower the coffins into the graves. The granite is minute particles of tombstone. And he only had to cross the road to steal a scalpel from the dispensary opposite. You remember Wiggins and his gang, the Baker Street Irregulars? Yes, the street urchins, whom you employ upon occasion, and Wiggins is their leader. Yes. Well, I have hired their services again. I have instructed them to find out the address of the bishop's nephew. I think he's here. Hello, Mr. Holmes. Wiggins, my young friend, have you found the information for which the good Dr. Watson is going to pay you? Yes, Mr. Holmes, it was easy. Very well, I understand. Um, here are a few pennies. Thanks, Dr. Watson. Uh, the man you're looking for lives near Kensington. Does he live alone? Yes, but he rents a room for an old lady. Did she see you? No, Mr. Holmes. No one saw me. Perfect. Watson, give our young friend another shilling as a reward for his discretion. Here we go again. But of course... I'm falling asleep, Holmes. Aren't you tired? No, I have an exceptional constitution. I can't remember ever having been fatigued by work. Idleness, on the other hand, exhausts me completely. Go to bed, Watson. The night will be short. We leave at dawn. Wow, this is a real adventure. It's exciting. I like it better than made-up stories. I want to know what happens next. Keep reading. I'm going to. Ah, oh, I want to listen to... My readers must excuse me if I do not describe in full detail here the terrible images which haunted me that night. I had a sense that something extraordinary would take place, but I was scarcely prepared for the reality of it. Good morning, Holmes. Did you get any rest? I did not attempt to sleep. Have you managed to come to any conclusions? I think that we might follow three trails. We can visit Whitechapel to try to discover the identity of the murderers by making inquiries at Dispensary 4661 and at the Whitechapel Street Cemetery. The poison trail seems more important to me. We should perhaps go to Westgate Prison first to see Hans Shieldman. Yes, and let us not forget the bishop's irascible nephew, whose address we now have, Thanks to my Baker Street Irregulars, I have located each place on our map of London. Holmes, let me remind you that we still have not been officially instructed to investigate this affair. Ah, well, we will just have to hide that small detail. Nothing interesting.
Westgate Prison. Here we are at the famous Westgate Prison, one of the oldest and surest in the kingdom. I've heard that it is soon going to be demolished. Don't you find it strange that it still houses criminals as dangerous as Hans Schielman? There's nothing strange about it, Watson. The name of this prison is linked with numerous failed escape attempts. As long as it stands, the criminals will fear it. Good morning, gentlemen. Are you expected? No, but we wish to meet with one of your prisoners, Hans Schielman. I'm afraid that at the moment that is impossible. Access to the cells is controlled strictly. You can't go there without permission from the director. Then would you be so good as to announce us? I am Sherlock Holmes, and this is Dr. Watson. The famous Holmes and Watson. What an honour. My name is Brighton. Frank Brighton. I'm afraid that I can't announce you. I'm not allowed to leave my post, under any circumstances. But I'm sure that the director won't refuse to see you, even without an appointment. Do you see the corridor behind the reception? Follow it to the secretary's office. You'll find him there. Thank you, Warden Brighton. One last thing. Hans Schielman received any visits lately? None. And I'm sure because I've dealt with receiving visitors for several weeks now. I've volunteered because it's a calm post to be in. We don't get many visitors and it gives me time to write. Just like you, Dr. Watson. I enjoy literature and the... Po very good. Thank you. That was very impolite, Holmes. That man admires our work. You could have given him... Another time. Let's go and meet the director of the prison. It is about the exit door. Sorry, sirs. I'm on duty. I can't help you. Sorry, but this area is prohibited without a pass. Please leave. We must see the prison director quickly. Cleaning materials, otherwise known as a broom cupboard. Nothing of interest here. Closed. Closed. Staff cloakroom. The locker room. This is where the prisoner's things are kept. Let us go to the secretary's office. Good morning, miss. Oh, uh, excuse me, I dropped off. Good morning, gentlemen. What can I do for you? I am Sherlock Holmes, and this is Dr. Watson. We would like to talk to the director. I'll just go and see if he can receive you. Tiredness, pale face, stiffness. I believe that the young lady is expecting a happy event. It would seem so. What should we do next, Holmes? This charming secretary is Miss Jenny Patterson. This small rack is for urgent letters to be given immediately to the director. The director's office, Mr. P. Patterson. No need to go in there. Strange. The director and the secretary have the same name. I'm delighted to meet you, Mr. Holmes. I am Paul Patterson, director of this establishment. You wish to talk to me. I hope this unexpected visit isn't to announce bad news. No, do not worry. We are investigating an affair of the highest importance, one which could potentially affect the security of the kingdom. Therefore, it is imperative that we interview one of your prisoners, Hans Schielman. Hans the Rat Killer? He's been in here for a long while now, and he's had no contact with the outside. 
How could he be involved in such an affair? That is what we would like to find out. And you have been commissioned by Scotland Yard? Evidently. Very well. I have complete confidence in you, Mr. Holmes. I will draw up a pass that you should give to Warden James in the guardroom. He will show you to the cells. Thank you, Director. Keep me informed of your progress. And if there is anything else, don't hesitate to let me know. We shall certainly do so. Miss Patterson, you have the same name as the Director. Are you related? Come, Watson. Anyone who might have made the slightest study of anthropology would have noted the similarities between the young lady and her father. Mr. Holmes is right. I am his daughter. But he doesn't like to talk about it. I think he's afraid of being accused of favouritism. I'm sure it was your qualities alone which secured you this position, Miss. If you must try out your powers of seduction, then what do you say about using them on the rat killer? Oh, goodbye, Miss. Goodbye, gentlemen. Hot tea! Leads to the high security area, where the most dangerous prisoners are locked up. Ah, you've got a pass for the high security area. It's the door at the end. Go ahead. It is potassium nitrate, isn't it? Yes. Salt Peter or whatever. It is about the signing in book. My name is Peter James, Chief Warden, and this is Deputy Warden O'Sullivan. I imagine I will find Hans Schielman behind these bars in the basement. Yes, the high security cells are down there. Is this the only access? Yes, there was a second door at the end of the main hall, but it's been blocked up as a security measure. Thank you, Chief Warden. At your service. If you require further information, Warden Mackenzie will help you. He is at his post in the basement. Mr. Holmes, I am a huge admirer of yours. I have followed all your cases and successes with the greatest interest. What enthusiasm. Have you ever thought of a career in the police force? Have I thought about it? It's my dream. And I'm going to try my chance once this establishment closes down. I'm studying hard for the examination to get into police school. Tell me about the prisoners, Warden James. We only have a few. As you might be aware, the days of this place are numbered. Therefore, we no longer receive new prisoners. Those who are already here are among the most dangerous in London. We have three at the moment. Hans the Rat Killer and the Flint Brothers. The Flint Brothers? Yes, two rather simple-minded maniacs who detest one another despite their relation. They massacred their parents and decapitated their neighbours. It took more than nine policemen to overpower them. See you later, Mr. Holmes. It is the guard's guest book, perhaps for distinguished guests. I'm glad to have been of service, Mr. Holmes. 
See you later, Mr. Holmes. I'm glad to have been of service, Mr. Holmes. See you later, Mr. Rome. This device must be the alarm. The guards must spend long hours here. These weapons are obviously ready to use in case of emergency. Here's the famous high security area. Warden Mackenzie, at your service, sir. Good morning, Warden. I have a pass which allows me to speak with prisoner Hans. Very well. It is the cell at the end to your left. I'd advise you to walk in the middle of the corridor. Warden Mackenzie, at your service, sir. I'm gonna kill my brother, but before that, I'm gonna make him eat his own eyes, just for a laugh. <laughs> what do you want? You're a friend of my brother, are you? That dirty rat. I'm going to have his guts for garters. What? Hans Schielman, I require some information from you. So, who do we have here? The celebrated Sherlock Holmes himself. Do you know that for all the time I have spent rotting in here, you are my first and only visitor? I think this is cause for celebration. A confrontation between two geniuses, two extraordinary minds. I am afraid that you are not quite as great a chemist as you believe you are, Mr. Shieldman. I will not say that you never were. No, it was certainly true once. But you see, while you are whiling away your days in here, it appears that someone on the outside is at the point of surpassing you, if that is not already the case. Yes, I heard about that. A chemical poison that eats away at the flesh and provokes hysteria. I recognize talent when I see it, but it's only a matter of time before I win back my laurels, believe me. What can you tell me? That depends on what you can bring to me. What do you want? <laughs> Do you know why I am treated so harshly? For my meals, I am given nothing but a hunk of bread. And even then, not just any sort. The... Get to the point. Never interrupt me! <laughs> Where was I? Oh, yes, the bread. Did you know that with a little rye yeast, a pinch of moss, certain cockroach secretions, just enough light and damp with a few other ingredients that I will keep quiet about, I succeeded in poisoning half the staff here. <laughs> Unfortunately, a little something was omitted, which would have made the results fatal. Instead, it merely caused acute attacks of stress and powerful hallucinations. Even so, I got a great laugh out of watching them cry like babies when they saw their most primitive fears materializing before them. 
You are a monster, Mr. Shieldman. Thank you. It wasn't a compliment. But of course it was! You others, you ordinary, narrow-minded people. You are afraid of anything that you cannot comprehend. You call me a monster, because what you find impossible to face is just the slightest fraction of my genius. If by monster you mean someone who is nothing like you, <laughs> then it is a compliment. What do you need? Very little. Just something to write with. You see my brain. Races like an engine with too many thoughts. I see them crackle and explode into thousands of formulae right in front of me. What a torture not to be able to write them down. What a hell to see them vanish just as quickly as they appear to me. Just bring me something that I can write with. That's all. That seems an easy enough request to fulfill. But listen, I don't want a vulgar inkwell and a pigeon's feather. No, I need material fit for my talent. I want my ink pen. Bring it to me and I will be happy to pass on to you a little of my knowledge of modern chemistry. Where is it? It was confiscated upon my arrival here. I suppose it might be in my locker, in the locker room. Leave me now, and don't come back without my ink pen. See you soon, Mr. Holmes. Warden McKen. I'm glad to have been of service, Mr. Holmes. Can you tell me where I might find the locker room? In the corridor that leads to the director's office. That's where the prisoner's civilian stuff is held. But seeing the length of their sentences, they've little chance of ever getting it back. Can you open the locker room for us? We would like to inspect Shieldman's personal items. No, Mr. Holmes. I'm not responsible for that. You will find the keys in the secretary's office. See you later, Mr. Holmes. Miss, may we borrow the keys to the locker room? You will need authorization from the director to open that door. If you wait a moment, then I will inform him. We will wait, thank you. Anything new, Mr. Holmes? Is your investigation advancing? Mr. Holmes, have you been able to get what you wanted from our lodger? Not yet. We must first cast light upon a crucial point, and for that we require your help again. What can I do? We need to examine Shieldman's civilian clothing. Very well, but be extremely careful. What do you mean? In that madman's compartment, you will find a strange little coded case which refused point-blank to open when he was incarcerated. We did try to force it, but without success. Didn't you ask the experts? Of course we did. Experts from Scotland Yard came to examine it, but they came to the conclusion that it was better that the case remain shut than tamper with it too much. I see. They were afraid that some poison or other might escape if it was opened. Exactly. Bear in mind that this man is an evil genius, a master poisoner, and that his poisons are never ordinary. Here's the key to the locker room. I give you the authorization to open it. Good. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. Miss Patterson, the guards are still waiting for you to put up the duty list. Do it as soon as possible.
Without it, the changing of the guard cannot take place. Or had you forgotten? <laughs> Dry your tears, miss. I'm certain that your father didn't mean to hurt you. Mr. Watson, I can't put up the duty list. And when he finds out, he'll be furious. Why can't you? It's in my locker, in the cloakroom, and I've lost the key. Your aunt. Say no more, Holmes. As you keep repeating, time is against us. Let's go and look at the things in the rat killer's locker. But what could I have done with the keys? <laughs> The locker room. This is where the prisoner's things are kept. Closed. Here is the locker of our friend, Hans, the mad scientist. Oh, what a jumble! A paper knife. Blotting paper. This solid box must hold a precious object. Let us see. Nothing of interest here. 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 Poem in Hans's handwriting. Blotting paper. Blotting paper. There is something interesting here. 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 I can't do that. This cannot be a simple coincidence. Perfect. What is written on that note, Holmes? Later, Watson, later. We can give Hans his pen.
What a bunch of incompetence. Oh, if I was as unprofessional as that, there would be murderers running all over the town. What's the matter? Are you a patient of Dr. Watson? Very amusing. I was going on about the dry cleaners in Westgate Street. They've just delivered my ceremonial uniform in the middle of my duty, when I've told them a thousand times not to bring it until after six in the evening. A ceremonial uniform? You've been promoted? No, and that's not about to happen. No, I've been invited to a wedding. I, I mean, I hope to be... I'm in trouble. If the director sees that I've left my post, I'll be sacked without pay. Give it to me, Warden Brighton. I'll take care of it for you. Really? Thanks a lot. Here's the key to the cloakroom and that of my locker. I'm really grateful, Mr Holmes. What have you got in mind, Holmes? You're not doing this out of kindness, are you? No, out of curiosity. We will be able to access the cloakroom with these keys. Sorry, Mr. Holmes, you can't go into the basement for the moment. For what reason? The door has locked itself automatically. We must enter a new security code. Do it, then. Miss Patterson hasn't put up the guard duty list yet. Without that information, we don't know who's authorised to take note of the new code. So Mackenzie is locked in the high security zone? Yes, but don't worry about him. He's trained for this sort of... dysfunction. Why not ask the director to take note of the code and open the door? He isn't allowed to, and I doubt that he would run the risk of going against the orders of the administration centre. Anyway, the bars in the high security section are joined to the alarm system, which is in that room. We only need to sound it to unblock, but you see, we can't do that now. We'll try to find the duty list, Warden James. Closed. Here is Brighton's locker. of soda. Brighton must have an upset stomach, caused by stress without a doubt. The name on the key is Jenny Patterson. That is interesting. I need something. Bicarbonate of soda. Brighton must have an upset stomach, caused by stress without a doubt. Let us examine Miss Patterson's locker. The lock on this box is rather sophisticated. Incredible! Is Jenny hiding something?
It's really very clever. Little Jenny is astonishing. A locket sealing the relation between Jenny and Warden Brighton. Decidedly, this boy is not a great poet. Here is the famous guard duty list. Interesting. A letter from Brighton to Jenny. Barely literate. Apparently, Jenny is carrying Brighton's child, and it seems that Jenny's father, the director, is unaware of this. What should we do next, Holmes? We can give Hans his pen. We have found the guard duty cards, miss. If you like, I can go and discreetly give them to the guards. Oh, thank you. You've got me out of a lot of trouble, Mr. Holmes. We have found Chief Warden James's duty list. Good. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Let's see. O'Sullivan, it's you who takes over from Mackenzie. Take note of the code, please, and unblock the door. At once, Chief. Ah, oh, Mr. Holmes, could I ask you for a favour? Please do. I think I can say, on behalf of all the staff, that we would be honoured if you would care to write something in our guest book. With pleasure, O'Sullivan. You seem worn out, O'Sullivan. A good night's sleep would do you good. A good night's sleep would do me good. You're right, Mr. Holmes. Is something worrying you? As you know, Westgate Prison will soon be demolished, and I'm spending most of my nights studying for my exam to join the police. You understand, I have to think about my future, so sleep isn't a priority at the moment. Scotland Yard is always looking for young, competent and motivated men. Would a letter of recommendation from me allow you to get some sleep? What? A letter from Mr. Sherlock Holmes, recommending me for Scotland Yard? Are you quite serious? Completely serious, my young friend. May I use this writing paper, the one on your desk? A thousand thanks, Mr. Holmes. A thousand thanks. It is addressed to Inspector Baines, a good friend of mine. There's no need to remind you that it must be opened only by the person to whom it is addressed. Yes, of course. I'll give it to him personally. Thank you again, Mr. Holmes. At your service, Mr. Holmes. Well, see you soon, Mr. Holmes. Well, you have what you wanted, your precious pen. 
You seem annoyed, Mr. Holmes. I would even go so far as to say terribly worried. Why should you care, Mr. Shieldman? Let's talk about that poison. I am not talking about you in the grip of natural emotions found in ordinary people who are confronted by the inexplicable. But as for Mr. Holmes, you are embarrassed, aren't you? Are you hiding something? That is enough, Shieldman. You have kept your word. Therefore, I will keep mine. At this moment, the poison which so interests you isn't finished yet. Its maker is encountering great difficulties in attaining the desired results. What is the end result? Now... Mr. Holmes, the end result of any science, as Descartes once said, to become the master and owner of nature. Here we are talking about human nature, of course, and the creator's problem isn't so much the mixture as the durability of his creation. What do you mean? You see, this poison was made using rare but very volatile short-living compounds, which means that it is only possible to produce small quantities, which, most importantly, do not keep for a long time. Conceiving such a product in a laboratory especially built for the purpose could be achieved by any good chemist. But recopying this alchemy on another scale and keeping it ready at any moment, observing the particular conservation and storing conditions that a substance of this type requires, well, that would need a genius. <laughs> I doubt if the creator of this mixture would be capable. And you would be, of course. Of course. Luckily, you are going to spend the rest of your life in prison. Luck is cyclical. It always comes around again, sooner or later. As far as I am concerned, I have the feeling that the cycle is going to be very short. Holmes, it sounds to me as though this shieldman is implying that an escape attempt will be made. Yes, we must go and warn the director. At your service, Mr. Holmes. See you soon, Mr. Holmes. Warden Mackenzie, at your service, sir. It is out of the question that your bastard is named Patterson. Very well. You refuse to reveal the father to me? Well, then go and join him. I'm not stopping you. I... I can't. Hmm. Director, you will have to postpone this small family reunion. We believe that a serious scheme is afoot. We must act without delay. You're not thinking of... Yes. Shieldman's words leave no room for doubt. It seems that he is planning an escape attempt. We strongly advise you to search his cell. Do you really believe that he's hiding something? Because I must make an official report and have a legitimate reason for doing a search. Director, if this prison is still in operation, it is solely because of its reputation. Think of the consequences of an escape. It would be closed at once. And what post do you imagine would be offered to the person deemed responsible? You're right. No one will escape from Westgate under Patterson. I will order an immediate search of Mr. Shieldman's cell. Chief Warden James reporting. The search of prisoner Hans Shieldman's cell has been carried out. No suspicious items were found. Thank you, Chief James. I feel better now. Without wishing to offend you, Mr. Holmes, I am glad that you were mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, we've nothing more to do here. Shall we go, Holmes? There's just one more thing for me to see, Watson. What's that? Mr. Holmes, 
Sorry to interrupt you, but Miss Jenny wishes to see you alone. She is waiting for you in her office. This, Watson. How did you know? Wait for me in the guards' room. I won't be long. What an extraordinary gentleman that Sherlock Holmes is. You must have had lots of adventures with him. Oh, yes. Dozens. Thought he was infallible. But there wasn't anything out of the way in the rat killer's cell. Could he have been mistaken? I must admit... Warden Brighton! In my office immediately! That's an order! The director seems furious. Yes. It must be important for him to order Brighton to leave his post. I wouldn't want to be in his shoes. You... did you hear that? Yes, that's not normal. I've never heard Flint shout like that. But why does no Sullivan sound the alarm? Follow me, Mackenzie. Let's go and have a look. I'll come with you. No, Dr. Watson, you're not allowed in. Wait for me here. Very well. Hey, but... Uh, the grill is blocked, Chief. We've been locked in. And that smoke, it's coming from below. Oh, Sullivan! Can you hear us? Sully, are you alive? Answer us, Sully. What's going on? Can I help you? Sound the alarm in the guards room. That should unblock the door. Be quick. O'Sullivan might be in danger. It doesn't work. Hey, what are you waiting for to sound the alarm, Doctor? It's impossible. It's been damaged. I'll run and warn the director. No, Doctor. Our priority is to save O'Sullivan. Go ahead through the visitor's corridor and see if he answers your call. Very well. Take the keys. They're in our room. Locked. I've got the keys, Doctor. Thank you. Follow me, Watson. We must repair the alarm. Finally. There you are, Holmes. Follow me, Watson. We must repair the alarm. I'm going to turn on the system. Watson, you make sure of the contact. I hope that this isn't dangerous. It works. Perfect. It's open. Let's go down. Be careful. From what your colleague said, the flints are out. We are trained for this sort of situation. And we're armed. Come and help us, Watson. Everything is back to normal. Thank you for your help, gentlemen. It was a pleasure. But where is O'Sullivan? He's no longer here. He must have gone out through the visitor's entrance. Yes, and he must be pleased to have gotten out of the basement. Good. We must now check all the cells. It's the procedure in case of an alarm. We'll come and help you. You are evidently fond of wasting time, my dear fellow. Rejoin me at the reception when you've finished. Well, Doctor? Yes? The grate is open. This is alarming. He's fine where he is, under the cover, still. 
How can he sleep with all this noise? I'll admit it's not normal. Perhaps the smoke has poisoned him. I had better take a look. Be careful, Doctor. He is dangerous. Oh, Sullivan! It's impossible. He was with us only a few moments ago. Or else... Or else it wasn't O'Sullivan. My God, he's escaped. The Rat Killer has escaped. <laughs> I must warn Holmes. Ah, Holmes, there you are. Hans has escaped. I fear that this inquiry is a bitter defeat for us. Not at all, my dear fellow. Quite the contrary. Follow me. Why the devil have you brought me behind the prison? We have an appointment, Watson. Look who is waiting for us. Shieldman, I'll go back and alert the guards. Calm down, he's harmless. But, but what is he doing here? Why hasn't he run away? Because I asked him not to. Are you telling me that you helped him to escape? Quite so, as he wouldn't have been able to do so alone. But how and why? He's a dangerous madman. Holmes, you've made me an accomplice in this escape. You owe me some explanation. And you will have them. But my priority for the moment is to remove our new friend to a safe place. I won't be long, but I must go alone. I'll rejoin you later. Just give me your next destination. Very well. I suppose you know what you're doing. How could you doubt it? Here, take the notes. They will help you when you write up the account of our visit to Westgate. So, where do I find you? The next step of our investigation should take place in the Whitechapel area. Good. Go then, and I'll rejoin you there.
Here we are in the heart of Whitechapel. Keep an eye on your wallet, Holmes. This area is the highest for pickpockets in all of the kingdom. Don't worry about my wallet, Watson. It would be easier to move Big Ben than to steal from me. Or to borrow a shilling from you. Amusing, Watson. Really very amusing. Can we move on to more serious matters? I'm listening, Holmes. What should we do next, Holmes? No, it is unnecessary. You ain't from round here. You shouldn't stay here. It ain't healthy. Got a shilling, Gov. A cab builder. Nothing interesting. Whitechapel Street. We are in one of the main areas in the district. There's nothing left at all. I have to close. Oh, what misery. Queue up like everyone else. They'll only hire the first one anyway. Whitechapel Street. We are in one of the main areas in the district. There's nothing left at all. I have to close. Oh, what misery. Here's the public dispensary that we're looking for. I'm starving. Help me, for pity's sake. Good day. Please excuse us. Oh, Grant, is it you? Yes, but wait a moment. Watson, it's been years since the Faculty of Medicine, if my memory serves me right. Yes, we were young and ambitious. <laughs> I didn't expect to find you here. I thought you had gone to America. No, I find that I prefer the filth here, amputating gangrenous legs. Ah, <laughs> I'm joking, Watson. Unfortunately, I was unable to leave for Washington. I had to give up surgery. So instead, I crouched down in this rat hole, rubbing shoulders with the world's misery. Grant, uh, treating those in need is a noble calling. You underestimate the importance of your work. If you say so. 
It's true that in the beginning I felt as you do, but as time goes by, the more this cursed area seems like hell. You think that nothing can get worse, and the next day you see that it can. Now famine has hit these poor wretches. One can't always do as one might prefer when one is a doctor. Grant, I'd like to introduce you to Sherlock Holmes. Pleased to meet you. Well, no one comes here by chance, therefore I imagine that you need something in particular. How can I help you? Dr. Grant, we are in possession of a scalpel which was found in an unusual location. Does it come from your dispensary, as we believe? From its mark, I'd say it was stolen from us. A lot of things disappear from here, you understand? Life is hard in Whitechapel. When the staff find a way of adding to their salary, they rarely hesitate to do so. Thank you, Doctor. Farewell, Doctor. See you soon, perhaps. And take care of yourself. I suggest that we go to the cemetery next to the public dispensary. This stove is hardly working. That would explain the damp around here. Incredible! My colleague could at least keep a good fire going for his patients. Like all the sick lying here, this person is very quiet. Not surprising, Holmes, this person is too weak. She's obviously suffering from malnutrition, and for more than a few weeks now. Like all the sick lying here, this person is very quiet. Not surprising, Holmes, this person is too weak. She's obviously suffering from malnutrition, and for more than a few weeks now. Like all the sick, not surprising. Closed. A circulating soup kitchen. Holmes, the man from the soup kitchen isn't only in voluntary service. Look! A money game. I'm starving! Help me, for pity's sake! Closed. Even here, decidedly the poor people have been abandoned to their fate. Flowers, my lord, for your dear departed. <laughs> this cemetery is the very image of Whitechapel. Sinister, frightening, and ill-kept. What a terrible place for one's final rest. At least hunger no longer gnaws at them. This shovel belongs to the cemetery workers. Closed. 
Let us see if the elements analyzed in Baker Street and this cemetery have something in common. This rope is only worn on one side. This rope is only worn on one side. The rope used to tie up the Bishop of Knightsbridge came from this cemetery. It is only worn on the one side because it is used to lower coffins into graves. A leaflet for the soup kitchen. This leaflet is dated for the day after tomorrow. The tickets for the soup kitchen are given out on the same day. Only somebody who works there could have written on it. Let us see if the elements analyzed in Baker Street and this cemetery have something in common. Granite. These stones are of the same granite. These stones are of the same granite. Black paint. These stones are of black paint. The same black paint covers these stones. This black painted stone is identical to the fragments found in the rope which we analyzed at Baker Street and in the footprints of the Bishop of Knightsbridge's murderers. This must be the gravedigger's cabin. Well, judging by the state of this place, they don't work very often. Let us see if the elements analyzed in Baker Street and this cemetery have something in common. Black and damp earth. Earth freshly turned over, still damp. This dark, damp earth is the same type as that which was found at the Bishop of Knightsbridge's home. It came from a grave, then. <laughs> what a lovely thought. Everything coincides, Watson. The fragments of granite at the bishop's home came from the tombstones of this cemetery. As well as the rope that was used to restrain the poor man. One of those used to lower the coffins. I can think of only two reasons why anyone should happen to spend a great deal of time in a cemetery. Either he is at rest here, or he works here. At least one of the bishop's murderers is employed here. A shame. If he was at rest here, it would have made our job easier. Oi, oi! We're giving out free soup after mass, right here. Don't hesitate. Come get yours. All thanks to Prince Woodville's kind generosity. A ticket for a hot bowl of bacon soup. Excuse me, my good fellow. You don't look like the needy. We're not here for the soup. We're merely passing through. But I would like to commend you for your good charity. Bah! It's the Prince of Woodville who's the charitable one. All I'm doing is filling the bowls. For the first time ever in this area, someone's thinking of the poor people here. Look around you, at every street corner. 
You'll find someone giving out soup, just like me. I grew up here, and I can promise you, it's the first time the Toffs have thought about us. And no one tries to take advantage of this? No, mister, that's not possible. You have to exchange a ticket against a bowl. The tickets have the day's date on them, and are handed out after mass. That way no one can cheat. A bowl of good bacon soup isn't for you, gentlemen. We're looking for two people, called Grape Ape and Kurtz. Do you know them? Can't you see I'm giving out soup? You again! You can't have any soup, you're too rich! It's for the poor, not the toffs! And what would you say to relieving two toffs of their wallets by giving them a chance at dice? <laughs> With great pleasure! What do you want to bet? Your ring against my friend's superb silver watch. Holmes, I inherited this watch from my brother. It has a great sentimental value. Watson, show your watch to our friend here. Done. Make yourselves at home. All right, mister. First who gets 36 points wins. Perfect. Are you going to leave me alone? Can't you see I'm busy? We win. Hey, not so fast. We'll play again. Out of the question. You have lost. You owe me your ring. Oh, it means a lot to me, this ring. Me dad gave it me before he died. He choked on his own glass eye. Me mum didn't get over the shock of it, and she killed herself by smashing her head open with her wooden leg. And she'd only just heard that my sister, who's a prostitute, had caught an embarrassing disease that made all her hair fall out. And worse, <laughs> our dog got run over when he... As this ring holds such sentimental value for you, I will allow you to keep it. What would you say to exchanging that against some information about Grape Ape? That seems like a fair deal, don't you think? Yeah, well, Grape Ape works with us. He usually deals with the tickets, but we haven't seen him for a few days. Where is he usually to be found? Well, the last time I saw him, he was with his mates from the dispensary. Then that deal with the morgue. Now, that's all I know. It is quite good enough. Keep your ring, my good man, as a souvenir of your poor father. A souvenir of me dad, me mum, me sister, and me dog. One further thing. You said that Grape Ape's friends work at the morgue. Which morgue? The morgue at the dispensary. I must say, they got a funny job. They wash the dead, dress them, cut their hair. They clean the blood off the floor, chase the rats, stamp on the cockroaches. Mister, I can tell you, I prefer giving out soup. 
There isn't a certain Kurtz amongst the employees. Listen, we didn't play for info about the whole city. I'm not telling you anything else. The dispensary has got its own morgue. Interesting. Well, yeah, I've just told you so. It's the one that all the undertakers prefer. Think about it. It's just next to the cemetery. Thank you, my good man. Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye, mister. How can I help you? Tell me, Doctor, do you have a morgue in your dispensary? Yes, it is the busiest place in the building. We would like to see it. The door at the far end. The one with the unpleasant smell. Very good. Farewell, Doctor. See you soon, perhaps. And take care of yourself. Look, Holmes. A list of the recently dead. How sad. Hmm. I see names that have something in common. I understand now why my colleague keeps quiet about his morgue. This place is a real mess. Concentrate, Watson. We must look for clues about Grape Ape's friends. Look at the state of the instruments. They've probably never been cleaned. This is Kurtz's overall, so he really does work at the morgue. Strange that he left his overall here. Holmes, this is Kurtz. We've just found one of the Bishop of Nicebridge's murderers. I need something. Perfect. Two keys. A small metal stem. Well, well. This Kurtz was carrying a lot of things. Perfect. It's open.
Here, this hut is on the map. Let us search it from top to bottom, Watson. Oh, what a jumble! Impossible to open it. Bags filled with nails. There are a lot of them. Well, really. I can see a large crack. I'll need something thin. Bags filled with nail. I can see a large crack. I'll need something thin. A hole was drilled a short while ago. There is a sack inside this hole. Let us see what is inside it. We are making headway. How do we know what this means? This message confirms that we are on the right track. Valuable objects. But what are they doing here? Look, this chest has been nailed to the floor. This box has been placed so that no one can move or open it. Look, this chest has been... How is it that there is no room in this cemetery? Let us hope that the tree is still there. Here is our tree. Let us examine the inscriptions. Sally and John. This design was the last to be done. Sally and John is engraved here as a symbol of their love. Nothing of interest here. Nothing of interest here. Yes, it must be there. I need something. This shovel belongs to the cemetery workers. You frighten me, Holmes. I need something. This must be the grave. Dig quickly, Watson. Very well, Holmes. Look, a metal box. The lock on this box is rather sophisticated. This box comes from a bank. The criminals must have held onto it after a hold-up.
There we are. It is simplicity itself. This key must be important to be hidden here. These candlesticks are undoubtedly stolen. A hammer covered in blood. Holmes, there is someone in that hut. I saw Watson. Come and keep your revolver at the ready just in case. Open up. We're not the police. Do not be alarmed. That's a strange way of reassuring someone. Holmes, they are children. My God, one of them is hurt. What do you want? Don't come any closer. Are you the police? Don't be afraid. I am a doctor. I'm going to look at your friend's wound. Wait, Watson. I've got some questions to ask these children. This is urgent, Holmes. In this filthy place, the risk of infection is very high, and the wound could get worse with every second lost. The immediate danger for these children is not so much the wound as Mr. Fletcher. Who? Look at the wound, Watson. It's thin and precise. It was made by a sharp, well-kept blade. Any other blade, less well-kept, would have torn the tissue around it, and its size would be irregular. So what does that imply? In this area, who would take such great care with a blade? A butcher, of course. And the only butcher in the area is Samuel Fletcher, who at this moment is replacing a window that has been forced open. He's a man to hold grudges, as anyone around here will tell you. The children are in danger. A man as skillful with a knife as a butcher, and with a bad reputation to match, could easily strike a fatal blow by cutting the child's jugular. If he hasn't done it, it's surely because these little thieves broke into his shop at night to steal a piece of meat. The poor lighting in this area saved them. I can assure you that Mr. Fletcher has spent the day trying to trace these children, and if he finds them, wounds will be the least of their problems. That's... that's true. What do you want? Don't let the butcher find us. Justice is sometimes harsh, young man. If the police hear about this breaking and entering, they will see Mr. Fletcher's side of the story. No! Don't call the police! Please, mister! We don't want to end up in prison! I'm looking for a certain Kurtz. I... I can't tell you, mister. In that case, I must take the side of justice. You and your brother are thieves. All right, all right, don't call the police. Kurtz is a dangerous madman. He's called the Colonel round here. I heard he was in the Boer War in Africa. He lives in Batty Street next to the wine shop. The way he smells, he must be a good customer. Good. Watson, see to the wound. Never mind about the police. We must protect these children from that butcher, Holmes. It won't be necessary. I've had dealings with Samuel Fletcher before now. He's not the monster I've made him out to be. If he had wanted to kill them, he would have done so, even in dim light. By wounding the little thief, he wanted to warn him never to set foot in his shop again. Forget Mr. Fletcher, Watson. You... you mean you lied to frighten those poor children? Exactly. Clever wasn't it? Well, mister, that's a mighty fine outfit you're wearing there. You stand out like a sore thumb, and that's no lie. Watch that you don't get it all dirtied up, but you'd be welcome to come back to my place. It's not far, and I'd sponge it down for you. <laughs> Don't go back to Jenny's place. <laughs> You'll get malaria. <laughs> Thank you, madam. I'm certain that you would make a very good job of it. Uh, that will not be necessary, however. Uh, but your thought was a kind one. We'd best be leaving now, sir. Here, please accept this sovereign as a token of my gratitude for your concern. 
Well, I never. Thank you. That's right generous of you, my uh, lordship. You are very welcome, madam. Madam, he calls me. Bless my garters. What a gent. If you're ready now, sir. Yes, let us go. What a remarkable man, the Prince Woodville, to talk to such a woman as though she was an equal. Let's find Batty Street. What do you think, Holmes? Burner Street. Row, where Polly Nichols met her death under the knife of the Ripper. Street. Le leave me alone. <laughs> Sorry, the market is closed. There's no more produce. Street. Appalling, and the smell. But what can have happened here? Stay calm, Watson. Take note of every detail and be careful not to move anything. Very well, Holmes. This part is in shreds. The skin tissue has decomposed, yet the death is recent. Only a dog could inflict so deep a wound, but it appears that the wound was gnawed at afterwards. What terrible wounds! The dogs must have been rabid. Let us look at our deduction board, Watson. It is a dog bite. I can see the tooth marks. This bandage is a day or two old, no more. This bandage. Please take note, Watson. The same finger that we found at the Bishop of Knightsbridge's house. Holmes!
What a horrible wound. Size 9. Hobnail boots like those worn by labourers. This part is in shreds. The skin tissue has decomposed, yet the death is recent. What a horrible wound! The skin was deeply torn. What a horrible wound! The skin was deeply torn. This part is in shreds. The skin tissue has decomposed, yet the death is recent. The dog's bowl is empty. Grapes! What are they doing there? Someone wrapped some meat up in this newspaper. The blood is still fresh. This is yesterday's newspaper. Someone brought food for the dogs, probably just before the fight broke out. And just after they had been fed, they attacked a man to eat him. Incredible! A torn piece of a letter. It seems to be a letter of dismissal. A military badge of the 58th Infantry Regiment of Her Majesty and a letter stipulating Kurtz's exclusion from the unit. He served in 1881. At that time, the regiment served in South Africa. Kurtz was in the Boer War. A newspaper covering the war in South Africa. Kurtz must have been following the war with some interest. The Boer War is abominable, and it still rages. An old photo. It's written to our comrade Jeremy Kurtz from Commando J. Milan, Bloemfontein, 1883. Kurtz served as a Boer commando. He fought against his country. Apparently our friend Kurtz served in both camps in South Africa and was never a colonel. But that doesn't surprise me. A traitor, deserter and a false colonel. What a charming gentleman. The material on this tray is rather odd. A small burner. Small burnt balls. A pipe with a strange smell. There can be no doubt. Judging by the material on the tray and the pipe, the man smoked opium. Opium? I doubt if this man could have made his drug here. He would have needed a real laboratory.
My deduction chart is incomplete, Holmes. We are missing an important detail. Let's return to the clinic and ask if our friend might lend us his morgue for two hours. What are you going to do? I'm torn between a nap and a picnic. Oh, I've had enough, Holmes. The next step of our investigation, Watson, leads us inevitably to a post-mortem. As you're well aware, in the instance where a body's vital organs no longer function, every minute is vital. Be quick now and procure the room while I arrange the transport. Very well. I will see you later. Ah, Grant, you are still here. I need to ask a favour from you. What sort of favour, my dear friend? Might I use your morgue for a couple of hours? It concerns an affair of the greatest imp... Use the morgue? Whatever for? Letting you poke your nose in everywhere is one thing, but closing my eyes to I don't know what unsavoury practices... No, it's nothing like that. No, it isn't possible, sorry. Grant, listen to me. I... Don't insist. Where do you think you are? Perhaps because you come from the rich area, you think you are entitled to do whatever you like. But here in Whitechapel, it's the real world, you understand? The real world, where we have to take risks. Do you even know what that means? And this shabby health centre where I've been stagnating for years, it's a public establishment under my authority, for whatever that's worth. I am responsible for it. Responsible, do you understand? Of course I understand, Grant. Good. I understand, first and foremost, that you are a coward. What? A coward, I said, sitting on your backside behind a desk for years, complaining about your fate without even trying to change a single thing about it. I won't allow you. And you dare to talk to me about risks. I, who was wounded in Afghanistan while in Her Majesty's service, and who for a great many years has taken part in some of the most dangerous criminal investigations the country has ever known. But... As for being responsible, as you call it, it begins with doing your job properly, particularly when one is a doctor and caring for the poorest people within our society. I... The real life? Ha <laughs> ha! Don't make me laugh. I am a doctor too, Grant, don't forget. And I am ashamed of my profession when I see the state of this centre. It's not my... So, your disgusting morgue, you are going to allow me to use it. Dear friend, because I urgently need it for a vitally important affair that is way over your head, and whether it pleases you or not. Understood? If you want to be like that about it, do whatever you like. I wash my hands of the entire thing. That doesn't surprise me. This is a dismal place. Have you ever carried out a post-mortem, Holmes? It requires a great deal of precision. Don't worry, I learn quickly. Hand me a bone saw. Go carefully, Holmes, even so. I must clean the body first. I must mark the places to cut. My notches are ready. This liquid found in the lungs should be able to tell us something.
No, it is unnecessary. A ball of paper, swallowed recently. What should we do next, Holmes? I must analyse the contents of my pipette. Chemistry material. And smells as bad as the one in our sitting room at Baker Street. This liquid found in the lungs should be able to tell us something. Poison, and apparently very virulent. That was a most instructive post-mortem. This man was murdered by his accomplices because of his missing finger. I see. He was overly conspicuous walking around with a bandaged hand, as the police would have been looking for a man with a missing finger. But how did they manage to disguise the murder by making it look like a dog attack? The post-mortem revealed the presence of poison in his system. Everything points to it being a less potent form of the poison we found in the bishop's rooms. 
This man died as much from the poison as from fighting against those animals. I believe this new version of the substance provokes such a rage that the victim attacks anything in his path, and in this instance it was dogs. We are dealing with sorcerer's apprentices, whose creations are ever-evolving. They are attempting to obtain a particular effect, and they try out their formulae on human guinea pigs. You're saying that his accomplices forced him to drink it? No, he took it himself, voluntarily. The poison wasn't to be found in his blood, but in his lungs. I also discovered numerous traces of opium. I'm beginning to see. They mixed this horrible poison with his opium, knowing that he would soon smoke it to ease the pain caused by his wound. Exactly. And such a profound knowledge of both chemistry and toxicology is uncommon. Very well. We know the reason and the manner, but we are really not any further ahead. How will we find the two other men who murdered the bishop? By going to 13 Burner Street. It is in this area. But where did you get that address, Holmes? From his stomach. I see. He wanted to get rid of the address. No, he wanted revenge. I don't follow you. When the man with the missing finger began to feel the effects of the poison, he knew that he was going to die, and he knew that there would be a post-mortem. Shall we go? They leave us to die like dogs. My husband can't pay the rent. We've got nowhere to go. Another shop that has closed down. Something people are dying of hunger here. There's our opium den, Watson. Let's go. Good day, gentlemen. Welcome. What can I do for you? One of your regular clients looked within himself to give us your address. He was very helpful. Oh, I understand. Our clients quickly become regulars. Your friend isn't with you? Sadly, no. He is tied up with his dogs. I understand. I too love dogs. Come in and make yourselves at home. The keys to the establishment are all here together. Interesting. What should we do next, Holmes? Have you chosen somewhere to sit, gentlemen? Not yet, but we would like to ask you... Make yourselves at home, gentlemen. Someone will take care of you. Poor devils! See, Holmes, the ravages caused by such artificial pleasure.
Ashes. It's not very clean here. Hmm, jasmine tea, judging by the aroma. Dirty water. This bowl is used to wash smoking tools. Poor devils! See, Holmes, the ravages caused by such artificial pleasure. Closed. It's not allowed here. Go on a bit further. Please excuse us, sir. Well, we have searched everywhere apart from two rooms. One of these rooms interests me particularly. You are thinking of the guarded room, aren't you, Holmes? I am indeed, but we should not consider any confrontation with the guard. Let us be discreet and enter the adjoining room. It's locked, and it wouldn't be very discreet if we were to force it. Nevertheless, we do need to get in there. And the manager? Let us find a way of distracting his attention. Closed. A pity I don't understand Chinese. Have you chosen somewhere to sit, gentlemen? Not yet, but we would like to ask you... Make yourselves at home, gentlemen. Someone will take care of you. The key to the locked room is here. I must find a means of getting the receptionist out of the way. Dirty water. This bowl is used to wash smoking tools. Hmm, jasmine tea, judging by the aroma. Ashes. It's not very clean here. Holmes, you talked about making a client sick, but you were exaggerating. Surely you aren't going to force someone to drink 
Another of our differences, my friend. You cure people, I make them sick. <laughs> What's the matter? Are you ill? Hey, mister! It'll be all right. Breathe! The Chinese waiter is busy. We can go. There we are. It is simplicity itself. Watson, put the key back in its place before the manager notices that it's missing. I shall be quick. I managed to return the key without being seen. Perfect. Let's go in. A ventilation window. This small opening gives onto the guarded room. Holmes, shh, listen. Yeah, but that's different. I don't mind getting money for killing, but he was a sort of pope or something. And we didn't even get... <laughs> yeah, I know, I got nice rich man's boots. They must be worth about 20 pounds, but even so... And the boss ain't happy. And when I see him unhappy, I'm afraid. I don't fancy ending up like Kurtz. Perhaps you're right. But we'll have a chance to make up for it. We just have to get it right this time. Because he won't forgive us so easily next time. They are the Bishop's murderers, Holmes. The fiends. Calm down, Watson. We'll have to take care of the guard at the entrance. I think we should be able to find something in this place that would put an elephant to sleep. Very good. But then what? Then we take care of those two devils. Phew! What a stink. This bottle is full of barbiturate acid. We use it in medicine sometimes as a tranquilizer. A syringe that could be useful. Small balls of opium. I'll take a spoonful. This bill hook is very thin and solid. This stick will serve as a weapon or for something else. I need something. Hmm, it would be better not to go down there. I need something. Holmes, do you really think that this is the appropriate moment? Don't worry, Watson. 
My mind only requires stimulation when it is unoccupied. That is not the case at the moment. I am merely heating these opium balls to obtain a liquid solution. You have a potentially very powerful sedative there, Holmes. Be careful, such a dose could be lethal. This door shouldn't be open! Let's hide, Holmes. This place isn't very favourable for that. I hate the idea, but we will have to rely on luck. There! It's locked! We've been locked in! It is impossible to get out. It is impossible to get out. How are we going to get out of here? It is impossible to get out. Closed. I think that window is large enough for us to squeeze through. This window is well and truly stuck. We'll have to pull it free. It's open, but this window is damnably heavy. We need something to keep it wedged open. Good. We can get out of here. After you, my dear fellow. Very well, Holmes. It's time to take action, Watson. Go and distract the brute guarding the door. What? Why don't you do it yourself? You're an expert boxer, after all. It's not a matter of fighting. It's a matter of luring him to me. Ah, I see. I imagine that the sedative is for him. Well deduced, Watson. Do something to bring the guard towards me. Good luck, Watson. Uh, sir, would you be so good as to come here? No, not that way. We must take them by surprise. Let's get to the corridor by these stairs, Holmes. Anything clever. You're under arrest. Take them away. 
So be it. Come, Watson. Let us go. But why have we come back to Baker Street? It would have been better to join Baines to interrogate those criminals. No. In the hands of the police, those crooks won't talk, and you know it. They risk being hanged. I don't understand anything here. We must explore all our leads. Let us take a look at the map of London. We have arrived. The bishop's nephew lives here. Yes, he rents a ground floor room. Nothing of interest here. Can I help you, gentlemen? How do you do, madam? We should like to see one of your lodgers, Henry Hamford. Well, he's away. And you must understand, I don't open my door to strangers, especially with all these prowlers about. That is the reason for our visit. You're the police. No, Henry is a friend of ours. He expressed his concern to us about these intruders. We're here at his request. I'm not surprised. Mr. Henry, while he might seem strange at first, is a thoughtful and kind man. He must have noticed how worried I've been. Why, just this morning some of my washing was stolen, and I'm sure it was those ones who took it. It seems like the best place to start our investigation. May we step into your garden and then perhaps look into our friend's room? I don't see anything wrong with your looking over the garden, but his room... You understand, he didn't warn me. I understand. What should we do next, Holmes? Let's have a look in the garden. Without a doubt, it is the linen belonging to Henry's landlady. Indeed, there appears to be some linen missing. There should be a spade here. A small pickaxe. Closed. Tins of food tied to one another. The wire seems long enough. They look to me as though they're rudimentary traps used to indicate the presence of intruders. Oh, what a jumble! A rake. Why take it, Holmes? There is something interesting here. I need something. Good, we can pass.
the remains of a small meal. Someone has stayed here rather a long time. This newspaper is four days old. The bishop's nephew was being watched long before his uncle's murder. Nothing of interest here. To let. It is just as I thought. Here's an ideal view of Henry's room. No, it is unnecessary. This clothing is torn. The man who stole it must have caught it on a tree when he stood upon the fence. And at the moment when he jumped, he left this jacket in the tree. Closed. Is this the washing you were looking for? Oh yes, that's it. Where did you find it? On the ground. Doubtless blown there by the wind. They didn't steal it then. I'd have felt better knowing that those lurkers were nothing more than clothes thieves. That is not the case, madam. This affair seems to be rather more serious than that. It appears that these intruders were spying on Henry. Now please, let us see his room. Gracious me, whatever next. Come in. Take the first door on the left. It's open. He never locks it. Never? No, never. Well, you know him. He doesn't do things like everyone else. He lives in a world of his own. When did you see him last? Did he say anything to you? Yesterday morning, he just muttered a few words. I can't always understand what he's saying. When he does talk, that is. I can ask him a question, but he just stares off somewhere. The floor, the ceiling, as if I wasn't there. At first I found it strange, but I've gotten used to it. Yes, I know exactly what you mean. He's sometimes nervous too, isn't he? Oh yes, as soon as anything upsets him. Even when he's alone in his room, he gets cross. And then the next second he is standing stock still. He stares off into space and calms down again as fast as he became angry. Someone emptied a bag here. There is something interesting here. There is something interesting here. There is something interesting here. He got his scarf out, but he forgot to take it.
No hat, no coat. This rubbish bin was emptied, and then someone threw a torn piece of paper in it, and judging by the smell, there was also an onion. Onion? Let us put these torn pieces of paper on the table. Both sides of the paper are blank. All this for nothing, Holmes. Perhaps not, Watson. This candle is still hot. It's been used recently. During the day? Whatever for?
the address of a dock on the Thames. It is an impressive library for someone living alone. And he's read all that. Impressive. A violin. It is a lovely one, but where's its case? There is something interesting here. A box. Let's see. I am missing some information. I am miss I am I am missing He scratched the lock's cipher codes for himself. Watson, write them down for us. I am missing I am missing some information. It is noted. It is noted. I have noted down everything. This lock is very complex. The young Henry is remarkably intelligent. But according to the label, this box contained a Colt Patterson. It is a powerful weapon, Holmes. And judging by the receipt, it was new. My dear Watson, in the garden and in this room, pieces are missing that should never have left their places. What do you think? Quick, Watson, there's not a moment to lose. Go and thank that charming lady while I try to recapture our new friend. Recapture? What makes you think that he has run away? I believe that our man suffers from behavioural problems. You must have seen or heard about those poor fellows who spend their time counting the gravel stones in the garden or moving objects from one place to another hundreds of times in one day. Well, the bishop's nephew suffers from a moderate form of this condition. Nothing would be more disturbing to him than to leave a personal space in such chaos. And yet this is what he has done with this room. For it to reach such a state of neglect can only indicate that he was in a most desperate situation. And do you think that you can catch him? Yes. The candle here is still warm, so he left only a few minutes before our arrival. But it is the missing violin case and the large pistol which concern me. We know that he is quick-tempered and volatile. It is never wise to leave a gun quite capable of killing a bull in the hands of someone like that. Did he leave to go to the address which was written in the invisible ink, do you think? Undoubtedly, Watson. And as for the missing spade, I can tell you that it will be used for digging. Are you ever going to stop delaying me with endless questions? So, gentlemen, 
Have you found anything? We have learned enough to promise you that they will not return. That makes me feel better. Thank you, gentlemen. We are going to pay a visit to that mysterious address, Watson. But first, we must detour to Lambeth. Lambeth? What are we going to do there? Pick up an old friend. He will be a precious help in our locating Mr. Hampford. Good. And who is this friend? A friend who helped us in the case you so romantically titled The Sign of the Four. Here we are at the address that the nephew took such care to hide. I wonder what it is that links this place with the bishop's murder. The reason for the quarrel between the young man and his uncle is somewhere here in this industrial area. And that is what he has come to look for this evening. It's an enormous area and there are dozens of potential hiding places. How on earth are we going to find him? The old dog Toby is the best sleuth hound in town. If the extraordinary Mr. Hamford is here, Toby will find him without any doubt. But I've rarely seen such an old dog. Do you really trust his sense of smell, Holmes? Absolutely. Besides, you are going to follow him. Take the bark and go around that disused factory. If the nephew wishes to run away, he can do so only through there. If you find him, hold on to him until I rejoin you. Very well. Get ready, Watson. Let the battle commence. Toby's sense of smell is legendary, but he needs to know what he is looking for. Search, Toby. Search. Here's a good dog. Toby, you have found his trail. I don't think he came here for a drink. Our man came this way. Nothing of interest here.
and liver is stuck. Our man came this way. Good dog, Toby. He left by this door. Locked from the inside.
Well done, Toby. You are a true detective. Some ice picks are missing. He used ice picks to climb through the window. The door is locked, but we can force it. The door is locked. He took the gaff here and cut a piece of fire hose.
our man must be on the other side of the gate. Hmm, it would be better not to go down there. Locked from the inside. Carriage tracks. Toby, don't jump. Let us find another way in. Locked from the inside. Search, Toby. Search. There's a good dog.
Now I can go down.
Safe here. Safe. Whew. Ah! Don't be afraid. But Keep it's calm. It's you. Stay away. I want to talk to you. Don't be hysterical. Drop your gun. I don't trust you. You're out to get me. Don't come any closer. Poor man. What a dreadful end. He has definitely gone. But why was he afraid of you? He was terrified when he saw you. He must have mistaken me for someone else. Let's go. We have nothing more to do here. We have been running around all night, Holmes, and I've had enough. And that poor young man. Let's find a police station and... There's no question of calling the police, is that understood? Instead, let us see how we might continue our investigation. Very well, Holmes. Holmes, it seems that everywhere we go, there is a catastrophe. And here we are at a standstill. Let us return to Baker Street as quickly as possible. Oh, so all that for nothing. Oh, they didn't find anything. Sherlock Holmes isn't a nice man, is he? I don't think I like him now. Look what I found! Don't do that. We don't like him, but you shouldn't hit him like that. Give that back! It's only a doll! This is Sherlock Holmes' attic. All this must have belonged to him. I want to know what happens next. Keep reading. Three trails and two dead ends. The poor nephew is dead, but Baines has the bishop's murderers. The only one left is the rat killer. Have you questioned him? No. May I ask when you're going to do it? When I have found him. What? You're not trying to tell me that he's escaped again? Yes, but this time it's not your fault. Nor mine, for that matter. You've been using me, Holmes. I unwittingly aided one of the most dangerous criminals in the kingdom to escape. So please tell me why. An explanation would be futile. It would only lead to further pointless questions. But do you have even the slightest notion as to where he might be hiding? Forget Hans Schielman for the moment, Watson. Just concentrate on the fact that the bishop is on the chessboard 
In any case, the news has spread like wildfire. Look at the headlines. All the papers are talking about it. And the Globe Explorer, their editors must be jumping for joy. Let the dogs bark with the pack, Watson. But how could Farley be so well informed? Look, he also mentions our visit to the opium den. And in great detail. How did he know? Let me see. Contrary to what you might think, Watson, I do not consider that all of our trails have led to dead ends. We're simply missing a common denominator, something that links them together. And our journalist's mystery informer might just be that missing link. Should we attempt to uncover his identity? It is essential that we do so. Let us examine the map. We must talk to Mr. Farley. Find Farley's office on the map. You have been a great help, dear Toby. I'll ask Mrs. Hudson to send you up some fine giblets. Here we are at Farley's office. One cannot say that ethics play a very large role in his life, 
Look at the headlines pinned to the walls, like trophies of bad taste. Perhaps we will finally begin to understand the reasons for his persistence in tarnishing your reputation. Perhaps. This door is locked. Is Farley afraid of being interrupted suddenly? A press card. Osmond Farley. It's his overcoat. Cigarettes. An ordinary, inexpensive brand. I must go out for a while, Miss Jean. I won't be long. Ask my appointments to wait and send this message as a matter of urgency. Mr. Osmond Farley, I presume. Messrs. Holmes and Watson. What a surprise. What is there so surprising about being visited by the targets of your slander? I never slander. I inform. You will have to accept the consequences of these articles, Mr. Farley. Those words sound like a threat, Mr. Holmes. I never threaten. I merely warn. You don't frighten me, Mr. Holmes. I know all of your little secrets. And soon all of London will find out what really hides behind the facade of the impeccable detective. Thanks to my work, the whole world will discover the true Sherlock Holmes. Gentlemen, I don't wish you a good day. What a bore! Even to the point of refusing to shake our hands. Which means that we can avoid having to wash them. Did you notice the crumbs on his jacket? He had just finished eating and his hands will be covered in grease, the same as his mouth. Slovenly habits. That's quite disgusting, Holmes. Do not be deceived, Watson. The workmanship in those tailor-made clothes indicate that he is a man who takes pride in his appearance. If Farley has left without brushing off his jacket or washing his hands, then it is because he spotted our approach and wished to avoid us at all costs. But why? We will find out by searching his office. The secretary will stop you. Please reassure me, Holmes, you don't intend upon knocking her out? Only if we exhaust every other viable alternative. Coffee. It's still hot. We must find a way of interrupting the transmission, which will oblige her to go to the telegraph office in Kensington. It will take her some time to get there. And if we add on the time it takes to send the telegram and then return here, we should have ample time to search the office without being disturbed. I suppose it's unnecessary to point out the illegality of this search? I'm afraid so. This hanger has a large iron hook. Closed. I need a tool to remove the lid. I can hear an electrical humming. The secretary is using the electricity supplied by this switch. Let us see if I can cause a short circuit. There we are. It is simplicity itself. Oh, that's just too bad. Get out quickly, Watson. I'm going to hide here. The way is clear. Let's go, Watson.
a makeup case with a good brush. Someone has written something on a sheet of paper. There are traces of it remaining. I must look. I can make out the marks, but I need something to bring them to light. I must look. The ribbon is missing from this machine. A page of this notebook has been torn out. We can only see the title in shorthand and today's date. It's a message that the secretary must send urgently. I'm going to recopy it. You can read shorthand? You never cease to amaze me. Were you a secretary before becoming the great Sher? Perhaps, perhaps. But no, a man must have his secrets. The secretary has just changed the typewriter ribbon. There are smudges of dark blue ink. This paper only just escaped the flames. But who is this note about? And who wrote it? I will deal with it later. Someone closed the curtain as though he wanted to maintain his privacy. Judging from all the notes on the board, our reporter is an assiduous and organized worker. A photograph of Prince Woodville. Farley is evidently also interested in this affair. Here's what is strange, an attack of collective insanity.
A horrible story, and rather a strange one. Our man left his sandwich unfinished. This armchair is out of place. A bunch of keys, a telephone, a technological marvel. A number was written next to it quite recently. A fine, educated hand. Holmes, this number seems very familiar. Yes, but let us dial it to be sure. Miss, get me 1313, please. It is Scotland Yard, of course. I'm beginning to understand. Lucky you. This book has fallen down from the shelf. The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. My word, it's my stories about your investigations. A real investigative reporter must have read them, my dear Watson. My adventures have fallen from this shelf. This cabinet has a lot of drawers, each marked with a letter. There is surely a great deal of information in them. But we can't open all of them. We must know what we are looking for. This ashtray is worth examining. This ash comes from an ordinary, well-known brand of cigarettes. It is still warm. This cigar is of a fine quality. It must be very expensive and difficult to obtain. And it is not even finished. What a waste. The cigar end is still hot. Farley was not alone when we arrived at his secretary's office. You are thinking of the owner of the cigar. Yes, the reporter smokes ordinary cigarettes. Can you smell the subtle scent of gingerbread? That is the characteristic odor of a Habano Clarissimo. Our mysterious visitor is a rich man, Watson. This category of Havanas is exorbitant, and I cannot imagine a cigar lover crushing out such a marvelous smoke before finishing it. Since we saw no one leaving the building, that must point to a secret exit somewhere. How are we going to find it? by retracing Farley's steps from the moment before we arrived. Look, this room is teeming with clues. I can make out the marks. I understand what you want to do. It's an old trick. I can see what has been written. Please write it down. Very well, Holmes. Here is Farley's secretary's telegram. Nothing special here.
I cannot leave now. The key is still in the lock. I wonder which drawer the secretary was interested in. The DF drawer, of course, the one in the message that we deciphered from the secretary's desk blotter, closed. The DF drawer, of course, the one in the message closed. The DF, there are a lot of cards, how to find the right one. I can't do that. No, it is unnecessary. No, it is unnecessary. No, it is unnecessary. I can't do that. These blue stains come from an old typewriter ribbon. This card has been removed recently. This card has got grease marks on it. The reporter made them. Apparently, he's making inquiries about Prince Woodville, too. But where do you come into all this? Look, if we pull the curtain a little, we can see out into the street.
Farley consulted a card while he ate, which was given to him by his secretary just before she changed the ribbon on her typewriter. The reporter's greasy fingerprints are all over the card. When he went to file it away, he glanced automatically out of the window and saw us in the street. He closed the filing cabinet and rushed to lock his office door. In his haste, he pushed his chair aside, but didn't think to return it to its place. Precisely. He then hurried to tell his visitor of our arrival and showed him the way out. He then threw a piece of paper into the fireplace. But we still don't know how the cigar-smoking visitor departed. The answer lies in the direction the reporter took, Watson. At a certain moment, he would have been in a place where he had no logical reason to be. Look at our deduction board, and then let us go to the place where the reporter should not be. Perfect. Yes, Watson. In his haste, Farley dropped this book, taking it from the shelf. Let's search this place. There's a control box built into the filing cabinet. This box must open the secret door. We don't know the combination, Holmes. The answer is perhaps within the question, my dear fellow. There's a control box. We don't know the combination, Holmes. The answer is perhaps within the question. There we are. It is simplicity itself. Let us go and look at this secret exit, Watson. Chance has smiled upon us, Watson. This hat was almost certainly abandoned by our mysterious visitor. Imagine the scene. In his hurry, the cigar man drops his top hat. The door closes. The hat is caught beneath it. Fearing above all that he should be discovered, he does not attempt to retrieve it, instead preferring to flee. Who would take such action to avoid meeting us? I cannot tell as yet, but it is certain that he carries the advantage of knowing us. We must discover his identity in order to redress the balance, and this hat will help us. Let us return to Baker Street.
Let's hope that an examination of this top hat will reveal to us the identity of its owner. It will, you can be sure of that. For once, I must insist that you allow me to work alone, Holmes. As you wish. Take your time. I will examine this hat at my work table. This hat is of an exceptional quality. The man who owned it is wealthy. Someone has changed the ribbon for another, more modern one, which shows a certain taste for current fashions. Not a mistress, but someone who pays attention to details. This man is married. Heat marks and a strong smell of tobacco. A cigar smoker, which confirms that this hat belongs to the reporter's visitor. This hat was made to measure by a well-known hatter located near the Old Bailey. His hair is greying, and judging by the odour, he puts camphor on it. He is probably in his early fifties. Slight scratch marks. Slight scratch marks. The man wears glasses, and whenever he puts them on, he grazes the sides of his hat. This would suggest that he is educated and long-sighted rather than short-sighted. I now have an excellent description of the man that I am looking for. The journalist's mysterious visitor is in a profession highly placed on the social scale. He is rich and married. He must have called Scotland Yard in Farley's presence. He frequents the law courts from which he makes his purchases. This man is a judge. Let us look through my files to see if I can identify this judge. I have a memoir on the most influential judges. I have found my file. I must place it on my work table. I have found my file. Right. It is him, Judge Beckett. Have you discovered the top hat secrets, Holmes? Watson, this hat belongs to Sir Coots Beckett, a judge of the court at the Palace of Justice in London. A judge? Wait, did you say Sir Beckett? That name rings a bell. Um, yes, that's it. What an extraordinary coincidence. Holmes, I was reading something about him in the Globe Explorer only this morning. Decidedly, this Beckett seems to have solid ties with the gutter press. I bought it from a rascal who ran off without giving me my change. <laughs> I'm sure that I've seen him before, and... Spare me the details, Watson. Show me the article.
so. Lady Beckett is on holiday in Portsmouth. That means her husband is at home alone. Good. We shall pay a courtesy call, Watson. With a little luck, we shall leave with a few Habanos Clarissimo. That you should interest a judge of the High Court isn't surprising. You have solved so many criminal affairs that there are a thousand reasons why a magistrate should be interested in you. But why should this one feel the need to act in shadows? It's true that it's surprising. Perhaps he simply wishes to avoid being seen in the company of this Farley fellow. Mr. Kirby, our local postman, owes me a favour. He'll give me Beckett's address. At this hour, he should still be at the post office. I'll go there, Holmes. Good, Watson, but be quick about it. While you're gone, I'll make preparations for our visit. Sir Coots Beckett, I've got the address. We can go round after a nice cup of tea. Don't get too comfortable, Watson. We're leaving immediately. Let's look at the map of London. You have been a great help, dear Toby. I'll ask Mrs. Hudson to send you up some fine giblets. This is the front of Judge Beckett's property. It's enormous. It looks very luxurious, Holmes. This man has conducted his career brilliantly. Who says that crime doesn't pay? It all depends upon for whom. You never said a truer word, Watson. Now, let's try to find a way in. What's that package you are carrying, Holmes? You haven't said a word about it all the way here. Cakes for my old aunt. <laughs> Your old aunt? Stop pulling my leg, Holmes. If you want a sensible answer, then you should ask a sensible question. Very well. I'm going to ring the doorbell. That should be an appropriate task for someone like me. No, leave it. I'll do it. Closed. No reply. The house seems empty. Shall we wait, Holmes? No. We shall enter discreetly. The judge's absence is a blessing. It means that we can investigate without being disturbed. You're thinking of breaking into the judge's house? Have you gone mad, Holmes? Don't worry. I shall be careful to remove any traces of our visit. Listen to yourself, Holmes. You're talking like a common criminal. Closed. 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 Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, how nice to see you again. Do you remember me? Of course, Miss Lucy. How could anyone forget so pretty a smile? You are looking lovely. Watson, we have things to do. Holmes, you remember Lucy? We met her during our last investigation in Whitechapel, on the trail of Jack the Ripper. I remember only the essential details of the case. This brief meeting has been very pleasant, but sadly, I must leave you, my dear Lucy. I'll see you soon, Doctor. Another bank that has gone bankrupt. If this carries on, the whole country will be ruined. It's a nice day, isn't it? Someone moving. Even the residents in the well-off area are having to leave their homes. What a time! It is not surprising. The lack of goods and work makes life hard in London.
This lock should be easy to pick. Let's see. I need a supple pin, Watson. Can you find me one? Very well, Holmes. Ah, oh, Lucy, you have no idea how heartlifting it is to meet you here like this, particularly at this time. Tell me what you've been doing. You've become a florist. Oh, yes, Doctor, I am a florist. And I'm married now with beautiful little twin girls. Congratulations, Lucy. Enough about me. Can I help you with something? A pretty bouquet, perhaps? Not at the moment, Lucy. I really need a supple metal stem. A plant prop should do. Oh, I see. Is it to open a door or a window? Aha, Lucy, you are a surprising lady. Let's just say that the lock on the door to my flat gets stuck and I should like to get in through the window. In that case, a prop wouldn't work. Better to use a hair grip. It's the ideal tool for an honest man who wants to get into his house without going in through the door. You are wonderful, Lucy. Goodbye, Doctor. Here you are, Holmes. Perfect. This lock should be easy to pick. Let's see. Good, we can pass. Here's the kitchen. There's enough room to feed a dozen people in here. Yes, according to the newspaper, the judge's wife also feeds her pupils, in addition to teaching them. There is something interesting here. An ore lock. This isn't the place for it. Cooking oil. This classroom is magnificent. These children are very lucky. Can you hear that small metallic sound? There is something inside there. This photograph was taken on Judge Beckett's wedding day. This is a photo of the judge and his wife.
This woman is admirable. As she was unable to have children of her own, she decided to care for hundreds of others. The blackboard shows the last lesson given to the children, Ancient Greek. This screw is stuck. It is preventing the picture from turning. This screw is... This overall belongs to the young James. Sweet papers fallen from a pupil's overall pocket. This plan is useless. A book about student organizations in the United States of America. What should we do next, Holmes? The clock points to 6 p.m. Interesting. This is a photo of the judge and his wife. The most romantic evening of my life in the heat of Bombay. The judge got married in London and early in the morning as it is just 10 a.m. This photograph was taken on Judge Beckett's wedding day. This photograph... This photograph... This photograph... There is some connection between cities and numbers on top of the box, but I lack the necessary information to obtain the solution.
perfect. There we are. It is simplicity itself. A key. This screw is stuck. It is preventing the picture from turning. A desire to cook. Greek letters. Copy them down, dear fellow. Very well, Holmes. Perfect. An ore lock. The door handle has been removed. The door handle has been removed. It's a sweet box, probably for rewarding good pupils. One of the Greek books is open, perhaps the subject of the last lesson. Everything points to someone who does not wish us to open this cabinet, which is a good enough reason for opening it. Well, the young James has stolen the handle to the sweet cupboard so that he can pilfer it whenever he likes. If we find his desk, we will find the handle. The door handle. It's a plan of the classroom. Thanks to this plan, we will know which desk belongs to James.
All right, let's open James's desk. Perfect. It's a sweet box, probably for rewarding good pupils. Please take note, Watson. We are making headway. How do we know what this means? There are naughty children in every school, from what I can see. There is no point in visiting the upper floors. We know from the newspapers that this building is deserted, so there is no risk of anyone coming down and surprising us. This room is undoubtedly the judge's office. It is double locked. It would be better not to force this door, nor break a window. Judge Beckett could return at any moment. You're right, but he surely must have left a spare with somebody he trusts, of course. We are in the judge's private office, Holmes. What are you going to do? Turn everything upside down? That is a distinct possibility. I will not leave until I have found what I am looking for. A Habano Clorissimo cigar. Don't forget your cakes when we leave, Holmes. Of course, Watson. Blind justice. From whence his ignorance, amusing. This door is very solid, and there's no lock. The best thing to do is to carry on exploring this place, Holmes. An ore lock. It must be a souvenir. A souvenir from the University of New York. That's the university where Judge Beckett studied. The young Beckett and his friends, rowing. The judge used to row. Beckett, honorary member. This must be the symbol of an organization to which the judge belongs. Look at this symbol. It must surely be very important to Judge Beckett. Nothing but trophies. The judge must be very proud of them. Hmm. 
nothing of interest here. This door is very solid, and there's no lock. The best thing to do is to carry on exploring this place, Holmes. This gentleman certainly likes oars, to the point of exhibiting them in his office. A Greek letter. A Greek. This note must surely be very important to Judge Beckett. This note. The list of symbols of the American universities. I can make out a mechanism at the bottom of each of these holes. I can make out a I can make out a mechanism at the bottom of each of these holes. I can make out a me These oars can turn. Watson, this really is the most ingenious system. It controls the opening mechanism. Very ingenious. But do we need to enter? Judge Beckett is very rich, and the room perhaps only holds valuable objects which he wishes to protect from thieves. Doors are made to be opened, my dear fellow.
Well done, Holmes. Incredible. Masses and masses of files. Holmes, these files, these cards, these reports, they're all about you. So it would seem. Your whole career is mapped out here, investigation by investigation. Look, a detailed report about your work in Whitechapel during the Ripper affair. And there, your relationship with a certain A. Lupin. And here, the details of your methods and transcriptions of your conversations with the greatest violent criminals. My God, look at the titles of the files. Fraud, deception, corruption, forgery, murder. What does it all mean? Quiet. Let me concentrate. Concentrate? This judge has the reputation of being the most honest in the kingdom, and he has built an overwhelming pile of documents as high as Big Ben about you, and you talk of concentration? To open his chest to what end? Quiet. Holmes, answer me. What is the real reason for our being here? Did you know what we were going to find before we came here? Evidently. So that is the real reason behind this break-in. You're only interested in the contents of the chest. All the rest of it was nothing more than lies and manipulation. The most important is the one in the chest, Watson.
There, I have what I came for. Show me the file, Holmes. It is unnecessary, Watson. It's a file about you, isn't it? Is it so compromising that you don't dare show it to me? You came here to steal the research about you carried out by Judge Beckett, Holmes. It was the only thing that interested you. We'll see about that later. We must put everything back in its place. No one must know that we've been here. Help me. Go and put the paddles back into their original position and I'll deal with the rest. But that's the plan of my flat. I mean, our flat. Quick, Watson, we must get out of this house. Immediately. What? But... Be quick, man, it's urgent. Because of you, we have to flee like common criminals, which it seems we have now become. I only hope that the game is worth the risk. Show me the file right now. Let's find a cab as quickly as possible. We can't stay here. Why are you in such a hurry? You... Wait! Look over there! Judge Beckett! Yes, it's him! Let's go and talk to him! It's too late. Do as you wish, Holmes, but I need to hear an explanation about what was in that armoured room. I'm going. No, stay here. That's an order. Your giving orders changes nothing. I'm going to talk to Judge Beckett and you will not stop me. Watson! Watson! Are you all right? My God! What happened? Lucy! Oh, Lucy, poor girl! I must do something! Holmes, I need your help here! Forgive me, Watson, but I'm afraid that I must leave now. Leave? What the devil do you mean? Holmes, come back here! Holmes! Holmes! Are you here? Show yourself! No one. Perhaps it is just as well. I don't know what my reaction to him would have been. How dreadful. That poor Miss Lucy hanging between life and death. Luckily, I was able to place her in good hands. But how the devil did Holmes know that a bomb was about to go off? And what's more, he seems to have taken advantage of the tragedy. No more Judge Beckett, no more compromising documents, no more proof. There is nothing at all. A fountain pen, just like the rat killers. Today, that dangerous maniac is free. And what's more, it is Holmes's fault. That inquiry at Westgate was a total failure. Kurtz's pipe. So, Holmes took it with him. I wonder if he would have fired at those fiends in the opium den. A few days ago, such doubts would never have crossed my mind. But today, I find myself asking if he could have killed in cold blood. Aha! Toby, who knows where Holmes is?
How dreadful! The paper Holmes used to wrap that mysterious package that he left at the judge's house just a few minutes before the explosion. Locked. These events have shattered my nerves. I should sleep for a few hours, or at least I should try. Very well. <clears throat> Such a clever man. A brilliant mind, but so evil. He has hurt so many of us. Who are you talking about? Home? So hot. Flames. The heat is unbearable. Walter, I beg you. Where is he, that devil? One day he will have to answer to a higher power. Oh, I need air. I need water. Ease my pain! Who did this to you? Ah! Ah! Dr. Watson! Is that Lucy? Lucy, you are wounded. I can't find my children, Doctor. Find them for me. But I beg you, keep them away from Mr. Holmes. Lucy, no. Why do you say that? Let me help you. You are so kind. It is too late for me, but you can still save yourself. Holmes! I know you were in there. Holmes, open this door immediately. I think that I would rather not. Tell me the truth, Holmes. I need to know. You have no right to keep the truth from me. Tell me. I am sorry, Watson. Open this door, or I will break it down. Do what you like. The door is not locked. What are you doing? No! Holmes! No, it is impossible. What's going on? Police! Police. Yes, Open. just one moment, I'm coming. Dr. Watson, is Mr. Holmes here? Inspector Baines, what? Is he here or not? Uh, no, I do not believe so. Open the door, quickly. You're going to have to come with me, Doctor. We have a lot of questions to ask you about your relationship with Sherlock Holmes, and also regarding your movements early yesterday evening. It's empty, Inspector. Get dressed. We're leaving in two minutes. Yes, I'm coming. I'll do all I can to help you. I would also like to find the answers to some of my own questions. Sergeant, I'd like you to stay here with some of your men and search the place from top to bottom. If there is one clue here that will lead me to him, then I want you to find it. Doctor, you must understand that I am sorry about this situation. But if, as we believe, Holmes is a murderer, I won't hesitate to arrest him. What did you say? A murderer? You heard me, Doctor. The Bishop's murderers informed us that they were following orders from Sherlock Holmes. Baines and his men have ransacked the place during my interrogation at Scotland Yard. I would never have imagined that I should be put through such an ordeal. I have always fought on the side of justice, but to be interrogated for hours like a common criminal having to proclaim my innocence over and over again. Baines is convinced that Holmes is guilty, but who can blame him? Everything seems to point to him. I had thought that the worst was behind me, but here I am as a suspected accomplice. All I need to do is to find Holmes, and when I find him, I'll... I'll decide. I'm going to search the flat. Perhaps Baines overlooked some clues.
harpoon that was used to kill Black Peter. A horrible murder. This disguise evidently belongs to Holmes. This disguise evidently belongs... smell. It reeks of tobacco. This disguise evidently... This... This dis... Holmes's tobacco. A hole. There must be a false bottom. I need something thin to prise it up. A hole. There must be a false bottom. I need something thin to prise it up. Photo of Irene Adler, the woman, according to Holmes. A letter addressed to Zachariah Dossett, the clergyman? But what is that doing here? It's a rent reminder. But why should Holmes be concerned about that? Another letter, this one for a certain Escott. Who could that be? This J. Escott must be a worker in the building. A letter addressed to a clerk of the court. Why in heaven's name has Holmes got that? This letter is addressed to a naval captain. My goodness! All these carefully hidden envelopes were addressed to Holmes under various identities. The addresses are therefore those of his hiding places. Holmes has never told me about them. I suppose that he goes there regularly and discreetly to pick up his mail. I cannot waste precious time by going to each of these addresses. I must refine my research. This is what Holmes was wearing yesterday. Holmes has left his tweed suit here. So, he came back to change after he left me in front of Judge Beckett's house, just after the explosion. Knowing that Scotland Yard is looking for him, he will likely have changed into one of his disguises. I just need to know which one. The best thing to do is proceed by elimination. I will use the wardrobe in the sitting room to reconstruct them. This bus. Holmes's Victoria Cross. This is what Holmes was wearing.
I must collect all the pieces of Holmes's disguises and assemble them in the wardrobe in the sitting room. Baines's men have more or less spared my bedroom. How kind of them. It seems that something in this disguise is missing, but I'm not sure what it might be. There, the entire outfit. There, the entire... Perfect. Now I know what Holmes looks like, and I know where to search for him. Let me take a look at the map. Here is where I write my stories about Holmes's cases, and I've got work to do.
It would be better if I took some money before leaving. One can buy a lot of things with notes in Whitechapel. Uh, my, my money! Someone has emptied my wallet! I always keep a little money in it. The police can't have stolen it. It's impossible. Last night I was too tired to think, but now I have to face the truth. Holmes stole my money, like any common low-down scoundrel. Good. I've got the address of Holmes's hideout. Six bucks row. Come, my lord. A little coin? Oi! Well, here it is. It looks like a boarding house. I can't knock on all the doors. Holmes will hear me and escape. As I've the advantage of surprise, I'd better use it. Oh, but I know you. You with the moustache. I met you back when Jack was cutting up all those girls around here. So you've come back to do some slumming. Danny, you are no longer, um, uh, I mean, you've given up the, uh... The game? Yes, my dear, I've given it up. Sorry, are you? I'm the manager of this boarding house now. I rent out rooms. Uh, that is exactly why I am here. I'm looking for someone who... He's not here. You don't even know who I'm talking about. Perhaps not, but he's not here anyway. You should understand that my tenants come here for peace and quiet. Quiet and discreet, my hotel is. Just like me. And I, Danny the Anvil, 11 times champion of male wrestling in Whitechapel, I guarantee their peace and quiet. I really must insist. It's very important. Mrs Anvil, I work for the government in the hygiene department and your establishment... Tough luck, ducky. I make my own law here. I warn you, if you don't let me in, I will come back with the police. Think about it. You're a grass as well. Cross this door and I'll knock your head off. Then we'll see whose side you're on. You know that I'm a doctor, and that is why I'm here. I'm looking for one of your tenants, a workman. He's suffering from a rare form of tooth loss syndrome, an illness he contracted from the lead steam in the factory where he works. Tooth? What's it? Tooth loss syndrome, a very rare pathology. A path of what? Uh, well, an illness that weakens the gums and causes the teeth to fall out. And you're here to put his teeth back in? No, of course not. Uh, may I come in? I must examine him. Fiddlesticks! I haven't seen any of my lodgers ill. I don't believe you. <laughs> you don't understand. His condition is extremely contagious. I must take him away with me. Yeah, yeah. And if he croaks, who'll pay for his room? He owes me for the month, see? 
so don't give me all that, or else you'll lose your teeth without being ill. I... I haven't got much money with me, but I can give you what I have. As an advance, of course, and the rest. The rest? Do you think I'm the Queen or something? Get lost! Dear lady, I'm a biographer and also an artist. Your hotel is quite exceptional. I would like to put it on canvas and perhaps write about its history, which I'm sure must be fascinating. If you're drunk, you better go and sober up somewhere else. You are so very unique. I would like you to permit me to sketch your portrait. My poor portrait? What for? What for? But to immortalise the champion that you are, of course. All the great wrestlers are doing it these days. Even Pudding, Nutcracker, Stomping Jenny. Yeah, that's true. If those big cows can have theirs done, why not me? The light here isn't good for artwork. Let me see some of your rooms. Perhaps we will find a better light, without disturbing your tenants, of course. Don't worry about that. Most of them are out this time of day. And if they're not happy about it, I'll explain it to them gently, if you see what I mean. I'm sure that they will understand at once. Yeah, come on then. Here would be perfect. A splendid place. Ah, I've just had a wonderful idea. Why don't I paint your portrait with you wearing your stage costume? What? Yes, I think it would be difficult for me to capture you correctly if you are dressed in your everyday clothes. They are too elegant. Yeah, all right. I'm going to be great. And it will remind me of the old days. Oh, but I left my costume with a pawnbroker so that I could buy some of that lovely pear-smelling perfume. Yes, I remember. <laughs> Very well, off you go. While I'm waiting, I shall concentrate and soak up the atmosphere here. All right, but don't touch anything. The bloke that rents this room isn't very easy going. You'll have enough time. The pawnbroker's shop isn't close by. What a mess. <laughs> That's Holmes all right. Tobacco. And a lot of it. A sheet of blotting paper. A few files, books about criminal cases. The books Holmes usually reads. Liquid reagents, a large quantity of it, the same as at Baker Street. Holmes uses it for cleaning objects before he analyzes them. Analyzing material. There is no doubt about it. Everything would suggest that Holmes has been using this hiding place for a long time. A microscope. A pipe. And judging by the smell, Holmes has used it recently. Holmes's coat and deerstalker. Dirty water. Holmes must have washed something here. These crystal glasses are magnificent. A violin. Holmes often plays, it helps him to think, but it's out of tune and the sound is horrible. Holmes must have become annoyed with it. That happens quite often. Each of these scores bears a piece of music by a different composer. 
Holmes wanted to learn them all. There's Mozart, Beethoven, Paganini. This pot is empty. A nice plant. I'm surprised that Holmes has taken care of it. I'm discovering new sides to his personality. Apparently, Holmes is packing his suitcase. This suitcase is closed with handcuffs, which in turn are attached to the sofa. It's impossible to force the suitcase. It's armoured. These handcuffs are extremely solid. You need a code as well as a key to open them. Something is missing. Apparently, this suitcase holds something which Holmes believes to be important. I must open it. It could be the chance to find out the truth about his intentions. Holmes must have smoked his pipe while reading the newspaper. A pipe! And judging by the smell, Holmes has used it recently. As for the newspaper, it's only one page, with a curious article containing musical notes. This is what Holmes was reading without any doubt. Why? What do these notes mean? These crystal glasses might help me reproduce the notes in the newspaper. These crystal glasses... I know that music. It's Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. There, I found the score corresponding to Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. There is a strange stain on it. I must examine this stain more closely. A violin. Holmes often plays. It helps him to think. But it's out of tune and the sound is horrible. Holmes must have become... Something is... This stain hides an inscription. It wasn't there by any accident. I need a reagent for cleaning this stain. Liquid reagents. A large quantity of it. The same as at Baker Street. Holmes uses it for cleaning objects before he analyzes them. This stain hides... I need a... This reagent is too strong. I'm afraid it will eat the paper away at the same time as the stain. I'll have to dilute it with water. Good. The reagent is weaker now. I need something. A sheet of blotting paper. A number. A number. 
A number. These handcuffs are extremely solid. You need a code as well as a key to open them. Earth! Holmes must have washed his hands here. Therefore, he must have been searching in the soil. In this flat. But where? There's soil here. Let's do the same as Holmes. Search. A key. These handcuffs are extremely solid. You need a code as well as a key to open them. Excellent. I've found the key to the handcuffs. Open. A train ticket for the London suburbs. For tonight. But if Holmes wishes to escape, surely he would travel further than that. Ah, there you are. I've got you. Hey, what do you want? That's enough. Take off that disguise. What disguise? I beg your pardon, young man. In a moment, madam. Stop playing around. I've seen through you. You're going to have to give me some straight answers now. I don't know who you are or what you want, but leave me alone now. I think you are mistaken, young man. Your ridiculous accent and your filthy clothes don't fool me, Holmes. And what on earth have you been eating? Your breath could kill an ox at ten paces. Right, that's it. You've got to get a thrashing of your life. Calm down, Mr. Hooper. I think that this young man may have mistaken you for somebody else. He obviously does not have a good memory for faces. On the contrary, madam, everything is crystal clear to me. Really? Well, in that case, follow me, young man. I want to show you something. What? But, madam, please, wh what are you... Calm down, Watson. It's me. Holmes? You were almost brilliant, Watson, but once again your last step was too wide. Take comfort in the fact that your finding this address was admirable enough. Why are you out here if it's not for hiding from Scotland Yard? I demand an explanation. You are in no position to demand anything. I found you once, Holmes. You can be certain that if you give me the slip, I'll do it again, and next time I'll return with Baines and his men. I have absolutely no intention of leaving. Truly? So what does this train ticket mean? It's a ticket for this evening. You... you managed to open my suitcase? Enough of your lies, Holmes. As a matter of fact, then yes. I am leaving tonight. We are leaving tonight. I'm not going to let you vanish again. Very well. Follow me, if you so wish. But I should warn you that there is little chance of us both coming back alive. I won't leave you for a second. And I accept the risk. What an exhausting journey. I didn't even have time to collect my medical bag. And you haven't said a word for hours. I have been thinking. What is this place? A mill. I can see that. But what are we going to do here? It will be more interesting to see what you are going to do. I won't bend to your will any more, Holmes. You have gone too far. Shh, Watson. Not so loud. Why? Does somebody live here? Yes, three men. Take out your revolver and try to keep them below while I search upstairs. Are they dangerous? They would kill us if they could. I'm going up there. Take care of them and make sure that they do not leave the ground floor. Who? 
Holmes, wait! Kto tam? The Times. It's a London newspaper. This poor man is mute. Ничего не понимаю. Ah, you're deaf. Um, this man is seriously injured, and the wound is infected. Кто там? This poor devil has lost his sight. Stop playing games. You were reading the Times. You understand me perfectly well. So, you found us. What do they want, Alieko? Have you come to finish off your sordid work? I don't know what you're talking about. You don't even know why you're here, do you? You're just a pawn. A pawn who serves and obeys. And you? Why are you here? To escape from the enemies of freedom. My brothers and I are at war. Against whom? Against order, liberty sites, the ruling classes, and those who exploit the people. Against the torturers responsible for our misfortunes. Against you and others like you. I'm not at war against anyone. Then why are you pointing your gun at us? Get out! I cannot! That's what I mean. You're nothing but a pawn. We've nothing more to say to you. Don't move from here. A strong rope made of hemp, good quality. Petrol for the lamps. All the lamps are out of order. This wall sounds hollow. This wall's these bags are old and half empty, nothing interesting. This chest is strange. Its decoration would indicate that its origin was in show business. Let's see. A magician's costume. A good luck charm. Poor bird, who knows what has happened to his master. Ideal for a magic trick. Nothing interesting. Magician's equipment. Perhaps we will find something useful here. Nothing interesting. What was Mr. Ferguson doing here? This mill is hardly the ideal place to hold magic shows.
A master key. A useful item to help a magician play the king of escape. Accessories for a magic show. Here is a fine range of suits. Most of them are uniforms, but judging by their quality, I would say that they are disguises. I can call Watson if I need him. Sacks of flour, mouldy and half-eaten by rats. These full sacks seem to be the only ones left untouched by the mice, unless they were filled only recently. This millstone seems to be in good condition. The flower is spread out over the floor. The sack is empty. Very good. The flower is spread out. An information card. Interesting. Safe conducts in case of crisis. Passports for high-ranking civil servants. None of them with names on them, obviously. A cog. Dark traces. It must be blood. Dark traces. Someone was tied to the millstone's axle. They must have remained there for a long time. There should be a cog here. There should be a cog here. There should be... Perfect. This walls. These boards crack under my weight. Interesting. These boards have been broken and hastily repaired. Ah, I have broken my knife. I need something. This wall sounds hollow. This wall does not seem to be very solid. It is not made of brick. That is just a coating. This piece of iron juts out from the wall.
These bags are old and half empty. Nothing interesting. Strange. This opening has been boarded up, but I'm sure that I didn't see it in the attic. Watson seems to be in control of the situation. Excellent. Impossible to open it. A tool shed. That could be useful. The blade of this spade seems very solid. The blade... I need something. That could be used as a weapon in a necessity. I need something. Perfect. Perfect. This wall sounds hollow. This wall... There is an iron bar in this wall. Very good. The false wall's framework is held in place by an iron bar across it. I can't do that. There. The rope is in place. There should be... Of course, a secret hiding place which contains a real arsenal. A Gatling machine gun, a real war weapon. Boxes of weapons. New pistols. This chain is several yards long. There should be a car.
The second cog is missing. Perhaps it is somewhere on the ground floor. Watson! Watson! Have you almost finished? I need to get the millstone working again, but it seems there is a gear missing from the mechanism. I look on the ground floor. Perhaps it's down there. Yes, be quick. We shouldn't hang around here. All I can do now is wait for Watson. I don't know what's going on up there, but this flower has given me an idea. This chest is very heavy and locked shut via a keypad. Without the combination, it will be impossible to open it. A large, strong paintbrush. Mechanical time switches. Rolls of fuse wire. I found the timer belonging to an explosive device. You are terrorists, aren't you? The oppressive forces won't agree to civilized discussion. Propaganda by the deed is the only thing they hear. You are murderers. We are first and foremost free men. Freed from the moralistic constraints of a system that exploits everyone. Contrary to you, a poor little sheep. Lost without his flock. Alieko, tell him that we won't go back there. My brother speaks with the wisdom of a free man. If you've come here to kill us, do so. But we will never follow you. We were fooled once. There won't be a second time. You are mistaken about me. I'm not a killer. Then you are even more of a fool than I thought. You don't even know why you are here. I pity you. You are even blinder than me. Are you... are you responsible for blowing up a judge's house in London? Justice and its representatives are the double dealers in this country. Judge Beckett was one of the cogs. Thank God that it wasn't... We made the bomb, but we weren't the ones who put it into place. The one who ordered it placed it himself. Who? Let us look at my brother's wounds. He's suffering. No, don't move. I am a doctor. I'll do it. If only I had time to bring my medical bag. Take this key. It opens the medicine cupboard. If you really are a doctor, you can help my brother. This axle links the wheel and the grindstone which must be in the attic. One of the two cogs which ensure the connection between the wheel and the axle going to the attic is missing. A gear. This will be useful. Hydrogen peroxide, commonly known as bleach. There's not much left.
Dropped vodka. There's only a drop left. These bandages should halt the infection. Thank you. The person who ordered the bomb, who is he? You are not part of his organization? What organization? The one he leads. The one that is responsible for the state we are in. The one that tortured us. Why were you tortured? So that we should keep quiet. I understand. The head of a criminal organization ordered an explosive device which he then placed at Judge Beckett's house. Once the attack came off, he had you tortured to ensure that you wouldn't talk. Yes. And why Judge Beckett? He was in possession of certain evidence against him. But who, for the love of God? Giving you his name would be signing our death warrant. Does either one of you know where the missing cogs are? Well, I think there's one under the wood pile near the fireplace. A gear? I must warn Holmes! There! Thank you, Watson. What was that noise? Everything's all right. Let us see what this wall is hiding. A body, I knew it. The magician was walled up here. I have everything I need. Now it is time to destroy this place. Perfect. What's that smell? I can smell oil. Holmes, what are you doing up there? Sherlock Holmes is here. No, I'm not staying Nor here. Am I. Help me out of Stop. here. Don't move. You think you can stop us? Sherlock Holmes is a dangerous man. I'm not hanging around here waiting to be killed by him. Don't be ridiculous. What are you talking about? You don't know what he's capable of. Whatever are you doing, Doctor? Give me that gun. Where is Mr. Holmes? You had better remain here for the moment. Am I under arrest? No, Doctor, of course not. Come in, Inspector. My wife did enjoy reading that last story of yours in the Strand, Doctor. That was a proper adventure. Do you think you might write about this case someday? I'd like to see it. Oh, well now, I don't know. But that is very gratifying. And I'm glad to hear that your wife enjoys my writing, Constable. My goodness, what on earth was that? Inspector Baines is dead. The water mill is burning! Holmes has managed to escape from the police. He manipulated me from start to finish. And to think that I played an indirect part in his crimes.
Today's newspaper. Mrs. Hudson must have left it early this morning. Baines's murder has made the front page. The news has spread quickly. The poor man shot at point-blank range. He had faith in Holmes right to the end. And it cost him his life. Holmes's pipe. Broken. I didn't notice it the last time. We think that we know the people around us, those who are close to us, who are part of our everyday lives, parents, colleagues, companions, friends. Then something unexpected happens, and it tears away the blinkers which we have chosen to wear. And it's at that precise moment that we finally see the true nature of those who always mattered the most to us. But in Holmes's case, what could have pushed the man? whom I have always considered as honest and loyal, to sink to such barbaric crimes and cold-blooded murder. I don't have the answer, but one thing is certain. Up until today, I had a friend. A noise, but it's coming from the flat, I'm sure. I knew you were in there! Holmes, open this door immediately! I think that I would rather not. Tell me the truth, Holmes. I need to know. You have no right to keep the truth from me. Tell me! I am sorry, Watson. Open this door, or I will break it down! Do what you like. The door is not locked. You've driven me to this! The police! Open up! Why did it have to come to this, Holmes? All those years of friendship and respect, of trust, everything that we went through together, and you deceived me all along, damn you. I wish that I had seen through all of your lies, but now it is over. It is all over. After so many days of relentless investigations and sleepless nights, I returned to the Thames area, to the very place where the bishop's nephew had died. I only had one trail left to explore, one last desperate attempt to understand recent events. I descended into the putrid, dark, suffocating depths of the town, the sewers. The fresh breeze from the Thames gave way to the stale, dank air of the dark tunnels. A shadow moving through an underground labyrinth, tormented, wandering through this humid, oppressive purgatory. What I might find mattered little. The most important thing was to keep moving. can see something. This butt is still dry, despite the surrounding damp. It was thrown here not so long ago. Let's be careful. A piece of rope that floats. If it's long enough, then it might be useful. Hmm, it's very heavy. Ah, a, a box.
body. Oh, it was weighed down by the anchor. If I can retrieve the anchor, I can use it as a grappling hook. There. The bars are completely rusty. Oops, <laughs> this bar has come away in my hands. The bars on this grate are completely rusty. This will be useful. This must be a service trapdoor used to release the water in the event of the sewers overflowing. That's of no use. That's of no use. That's of no use. Wire. A boat! I'm on the right track. I must cross the canal to see who landed here. First try. Now let's pull the boat back here. The boat is tied up on the other bank. It's impossible to pull it back to me. It will be better not to jump. I really don't fancy falling into that foul mud. This must be a service trapdoor used to release the water in the event of the sewers overflowing. The trapdoor is horizontal and solidly fixed. An old scarf with blood on it. This bit of iron seems new and looks like a piece from ordinary machinery. Footprints. Someone has been here recently. Footprints. Someone has been here recently. I need something to clean this grate. Incredible! This grate is new and has a mechanical locking system.
Open. Come on, John. Courage. And here's another. See how you like that. Oh. And how does this feel? <laughs> Don't think you like that much. <laughs> now teach him. Let's see if I can break. So very glad to see you, Watson. Whee! Yes, he's alive! The bad guys had better watch out now. Grandpa's alive! And he is a good man! I knew that he was! Uh-oh, they're going to be sorry now! My Grandpa rules! Yes, and my grandpa saved him. Read it. You are alive. I don't know what to feel. Relief or regret. Watson, my friend. You are not in a good state, Holmes. Neither are you. I suppose not. Can you walk? Not without your help. Why did you fake your own death? And who were those men? I have to carry on with the investigation, alone. John, I'm innocent. I'm not an accomplice of those men. Look at me. Do I look as though I could be their boss? Am I in a position to give such orders? What a relief. Oh, my God, what a relief. But how... Curare, hemlock, a few Indian plants, and sheep's blood to create the impression of death. A pathologist who owed me a favour for the death certificate. Holmes, I was talking about this affair of... I will explain everything, my friend, but we must leave here. Yes, let's go back to Baker Street. I'll help you. Lean on me. Home at last. I have missed this old room very much, Watson. I put everything back in place after Baines went through it, but I didn't stay here. I couldn't face it. Sit down, my friend. It is time for you to know the full details of this case. First of all, I must apologize for the distress that this has caused you, and for my behavior, which was, I know, quite abominable. I can only hope that, by the end of this explanation, you will understand that I behaved in such a way only to protect you, and that it caused me great pain to see your trust and confidence in me ebbing away. From whom, or what, did you wish to protect me? From Professor Moriarty. Moriarty? We should not have taken pity on him in that Swiss asylum. Do you remember, during the case of the Awakened, our indulgence has cost us dear today. He's responsible for the bishop's murder? Yes, but that was only a small detail in his plan. A detail which he had to eliminate as it compromised the whole of his diabolical project. The bishop had in his possession a document which he suspected as being one component of a larger puzzle. The ramifications were unknown to him, but he considered the matter as sufficiently important that he should consult me. The day before our macabre discovery, his nephew, who was in his confidence, brought to him an important element which helped him understand Moriarty's grand plan. It was at that moment the two men began to comprehend the seriousness of the situation. The bishop then decided to contact me. Against his nephew's wishes? Was that what they argued about? Yes. But Moriarty found out that the bishop knew of his projects, and he arranged for his murder. The murderers were also supposed to bring back the document that the nephew, young Hampford, found, but they were unable to open the safe. What was the document? Evidence of Prince Woodville's implication in the project. Hmm. The nephew must have retrieved it from the Royal Archives, where he worked. A link to the Crown. Yes. 
Moriarty wanted to overthrow Queen Victoria and place the prince on the throne of England. But that's impossible. He would have needed to create an incredible coup d'etat. Patience, Watson. First of all, Moriarty placed his pawns so they might begin to develop and encourage a tense atmosphere, ready to discredit the Queen and thereby raise Woodville's popularity. And provoke a famine so that the Prince's soup kitchens could begin distributing food and he would appear as a hero. Exactly. Moriarty quickly learned that I was making inquiries as to his plan and, uh, without wishing to sound vain, he knew that I was the only person capable of upsetting his schemes. He therefore set up a plan that I be discredited and thought of as a criminal. And you played along with him? Precisely. Allowing him to believe that he had succeeded was the best way of ensuring that his attention was no longer fixed on me. Why didn't you say anything to Scotland Yard? Did you not think it strange that Inspector Lestrade was away for weeks? What? You mean to say that Baines was working for Moriarty? I understand. The Bishop's murderers were in the hands of this traitor, and you were therefore at a dead end after our investigations at the Opium Den. Yes, and Baines' authority allowed him access to the police archives. He changed and forged all the charges in the documents that you saw at Judge Beckett's house. It was also he who substituted the Samoan necklace for a vulgar copy. So that was why the judge went to Farley's, to obtain Baines's false information. Precisely. But they each found themselves as instruments in Moriarty's strange orchestra. Judge Beckett received entire books full of charges against me, and a journalist such as Farley will not hold back when he gets the chance to make the front page of all the newspapers in England. Uh, with regard to Farley, it was a mere case of professional misconduct. And to think that I held you responsible for the explosion at the judge's house. What a relief! B but why did Moriarty have him killed? He was on the point of discovering that all the documents supplied by Farley, and therefore by Baines, were false. Exactly the opposite to what our enemy was anticipating. And where did the poison fit in all this? Unfortunately, I, I do not possess all the information on this subject. The first time that we saw the effects of this substance on the body of the bishop, the poison was evidently only at an experimental stage. It was much too potent to do anything with. Effectively. But in the second case, Kurtz, I didn't notice a great advance. However, there was one. The poison was no longer fatal. Yes, but the madness was still there. I should remind you that he attempted to devour his own dogs. Correct, Watson. But it was not the second case, as you supposed. Remember the number of other incidences of madness, either collective or individual, relayed in the press in the days prior to it? You mean to say... That Moriarty tested this dangerous mixture on a large number of guinea pigs, apparently with little success, as all those people are now dead. I say, apparently, because I do not have the least idea as to the result Moriarty was hoping for. And that's where Hans comes in, isn't it? Moriarty needed him to devise the substance's final formula. And so you helped Hans to escape so he might lead you to it. Yes, but things did not go as I had planned. The professor's men got their hands on him just after his escape. And you lost his trail? Yes, but I doubted that Moriarty would take Hans to his lair. To find him, I had only one trail, the bomb placed at the judge's house. The trail of the three Russian brothers. I found out about the mill by having the anarchist's trail followed by the children in my own secret police. Once again, their help was a determining factor. As regards knowing where to locate Moriarty's lair, I hoped to find the information in the attic of the water mill. I got to it only just in time, before Baines turned up. And you were stuck then, weren't you? Allowing him to arrest you would have meant certain death. Regrettably, but Moriarty's plan worked in any case, as after killing Baines, I became England's most wanted man for the murder of a Scotland Yard inspector. And so you had to make sure that people forgot about you. Therefore, you orchestrated your own death so that you might continue your investigation discreetly. 
Oh, that was a terrible time for me, Holmes. I am sorry, my dear fellow. Well, the important thing is that you are well and truly alive. Yes, but it is not over yet. Moriarty will take action one day or another. You were saying that you had found Moriarty's hideout. Where is it? In an abandoned fun fair on the outskirts of London. It is quite certain that they are all there. Shieldman, the Prince, and of course, Moriarty. If Moriarty puts the Prince on the throne, he'll have his hands on the reins of the kingdom. Her colonies, her diplomatic network, her riches, everything. Yes, including the army, the war fleet, everything he needs to help him conquer Europe. And eventually, I suspect, the world. Holmes, we have to be quick. His plan hasn't been put into action yet. Perhaps it's not too late. Let us go immediately, Watson. Do you really believe that Moriarty is in there, behind that fence? Something in the wind seems to suggest it, Watson. I have a peculiar acid taste in my mouth, if that is what you mean, Holmes. Well, yes. The air is tainted still with toxic fumes from the factory chimneys. I believe that I read about this place. The funfair was abandoned after the factory was built so close by. It was said that even the ice cream tasted bitter. Aren't you curious about the warehouse down there? There seems to be some strange activity taking place inside. Strange and in keeping with Moriarty's activities. Let us go and see what they're up to. That could be used as a weapon in a necessity. With this cable car, we can get up onto the warehouse roof. Vodka. There's a little at the bottom of these bottles. Russian alcohol. Holmes, the three brothers. There are two guards in front of the main entrance. We will have to find another way in. Cutting pliers, they could be useful. I can't do that. I can't. A bottle of motor oil. And lever is stuck. And lever is stuck.
a crank. This motor is from the cable car. There's a little petrol left, but not enough to start the motor. Empty. Judging by the smell, I would say that it's an oil reservoir. Let us hope it works. Here's what we can use for fuel. Look at this hole. This motor needs a starting handle. Given the maintenance, this cable car isn't used very frequently. True, Watson, but let us hope that it is still working. The crank is in place. It works. We are going to separate. I will find a way into the fair, and you must investigate the warehouse. Very well, I'll do that. There is no one on the roof. If the machine should get out of control, then just use the brake. There ought to be one. I should hope so. Anyway, there's no other choice. And when I've found out what is going on down there, what should I do then? Come and join me in the fairground. You can follow my route to get over the fence. Then you should find me easily enough. Good luck, my dear fellow. Come on, John. Courage! No one seems to have noticed me. Now I must try to find out what is going on here. It's a miracle that this reservoir is standing. The feet are being eaten away by rust. The bags contain rubble. They're tied up with good solid rope. I'll keep the rope. Carts from the soup kitchens. They appear to be queuing up. A large dry cloth. It's too dark inside this reservoir. It's impossible to see anything, but I can hear a slight lapping of water.
I must find out what is going on inside this warehouse, but have to be careful. The place is full of guards. It's too dangerous to go any further. An empty bottle. The window is too dirty to allow me to see inside. My cloth is too dry. It is inside these warehouses that Prince Woodville's canteens on wheels are filled up, and Hans is there to add his poison. That siren is a signal to open the doors and let out the carts of poison soup destined for London. I wonder what Holmes is doing at this moment. Here is a good place to try and get through. This crate isn't large enough for us to get over the wall, nor to see what is on the other side.
It's covered in barbed wire. It's impossible to pass by there. The way is clear. Good, I'm in. Now I must find Moriarty. The stand's owner must live here. A telephone line. Interesting. It comes from that large building. A target from a firing range. A target from a firing range. It depicts a lion. The stand's accounts book. Nothing interesting. No, it is unnecessary. The cover is dented. Curious. Let's look at the book's secret. Secret accounts. The stand's owner must do something other than manage a simple coconut shy, and there is a strange poem about animals. A firing range for children. They have to throw leather balls at the figures of wild animals to knock them over. It's clear that there is a link between the poem in the secret accounts and the animal-shaped targets on the stand. It seems to me that there is something behind this poster, but it is stuck fast. Let's see. It's the stand's till. There is no money, but there is a wooden target. I need something. I am missing some information. Elementary. There is a hiding place here. Interesting. I can't see a keyhole to open this hiding place.
there we are. It is simplicity itself. The Stan Slush Fund. I wonder what happened to the owner that he should leave without his savings. If the guard sees me, he will sound the alarm. I must neutralize him, but discreetly. There are probably others, and a fight would attract their attention. It's open. This building was a menagerie. I'm in the service passage. Oh, what a smell. There must have been wild animals here once. I pity the animals that were shut up in here. The cages are very narrow. Apparently, it's a medicine chest for first aid, I presume. Closed. Nothing of interest here. This cage has been blocked with planks, so that the interior is hidden from view. A large syringe for animals of a considerable size, evidently. A large... Old bandages. Everything points to that cage having been used to treat sick animals. A key. Apparently, it's a medicine chest for first aid, I presume. The only thing intact is this bottle of ether. If the guard sees me, he will sound the alarm. I must neutralize him, but discreetly. There are probably others, and a fight would attract their attention. I must put something here that will attract the guard's attention. There. That should interest our guard. Good. My little stratagem is in place. All I need to do is to wait for him to come back here.
I must find a way of neutralizing the guard inside. to shut him up, and quickly. I must find a way of neutralizing the guard inside. I must find a way of neutralizing the guard inside. Perfect. Thanks to the ether, this baller will sleep for a long time. Perfect. Another guard. This place is full of them. I cannot risk a confrontation. He'll see me coming and I'll lose the element of surprise. I'll need to find a way to trap him. Be careful of those boxes. They are balanced one on top of the other. It would take very little to knock them over. They must have exhibited those poor wretches in these cages and presented them as being dangerous. Bearded lady. This large, empty aquarium held the fair's main attraction. People must have been locked up in here and they are certain to have been mistreated. This cage is still occupied, not by one of the monsters, but by a poor man. He's still alive, but he's barely human now. Moriarty must have tested his poison on this poor fellow. If he was freed, he would leap at the throat of the first person he saw. I could easily open the cage by raising the door, but that poor man would leap on me immediately. The Mermaid, Poseidon's Daughter. I wonder what this machinery is used for. 
A rail system is fixed to the ceiling, and a hook is hanging from it. It must be used for moving heavy and bulky objects. Thanks to this mechanism, the hook can slide along the rail to be positioned wherever needed. The crank is in place. The hook is above the cage of this poor wretch. I suppose it was on this small stage that the monsters were presented to the public. Chemistry material. Ah, here's something interesting. Hans's diary.
What a dreadful diary. That Hans is the only real monster ever to have frequented this attraction. The bearded lady kept the key to this exhibition. Interesting. The cage is held shut with this bar. It only needs to be pulled away to open it. I need something. There, the rope is in place. This way I can open the poor fellow's cage from the outside without taking any risks. I could easily open the cage by raising the door, but that poor man would leap. Another guard. This place is full of them. I cannot risk a... Another guard. Another guard. Another guard. Another guard. This place is full of them. I cannot risk a confrontation. He'll see me coming and I'll lose the element of surprise. Another guard.
The cage is held shut with this bar. It only needs to be pulled away to open it. There is something interesting here. Here's what I've been looking for. The trap is in place. Now I only need to get the guard to go inside the freak show. The guard must have been warned. I need to get out of here. The guard is inside. I must close the door quickly. Closed. I must find a way of neutralizing the guard inside. Well, I'll be leaving you. I'm sure you have a great many things to do. But what have we got here? Ah, there you are, Holmes. Did you have any problems? None, apart from a few small things. What have you found out about this warehouse? Prince Woodville's soup is loaded and contaminated by hands. And in the direction of Whitechapel. Watson, in a few hours, Moriarty will have at his disposal a formidable army, more powerful and more terrible than anything that has ever existed. But what? The soup is destined for a poverty-stricken, starving population who have been conditioned for months against the ruling powers. Moriarty won't have any trouble in sending thousands of raving mad people to ravage the city, sowing death and destruction. No force would be able to resist them, not the police, not even the army. A perfect army, knowing neither fear nor pity. A tidal wave of humanity which will cover London and will fall away again, leaving a city of desolation behind it. What horror! And the chaos will only make Moriarty's coup d'etat even easier. But how will he guard himself against this bloodthirsty crowd? The chaos will only last for the time he needs. You mean to say... That these poor wretches will all die. Forty-eight hours after ingesting the soup, according to our good Dr. Shieldman, so the victims will be joined by their executioners. An immense mass murder. What Moriarty would call clearing up after work, no doubt. Good. Have you found a way of stopping Hans's process? Yes, I think so. If we can weaken the reservoir's feet with the explosives, for example, it will collapse and take the building down with it. Good work. What are you looking at? Have you ever seen anything like this before? Never.
Look, Holmes, there appears to be some sort of control panel. With an antenna, whatever its purpose might be. priority now is to blow up the tank in the factory to stop the distribution of the soup. Of course, Watson. A telephone line. It goes to the haunted house. It seems that this window is more vulnerable than the main door. I think it is too high. It's protected by bars with a closed window behind it. These caravans must be inhabited. Look, there is smoke coming out of one of them. An international anarchist's manifesto written in several languages. A metal plate, very solid. A wanted poster in Russian with the portraits of the three brothers on it.
This ladder is only held back by a bolt. There is no one here, and nothing very interesting. This ladder is only held back by a bolt. I can hear noises. We aren't alone. We had best be careful. Look, Holmes, the three Russian brothers. With a coal stove and dynamite. What should we do next, Holmes? And then the dynamite would be very useful for blowing up the tank. Good idea. But in order that we can get it, we'll have to get them out of there without their knowing we are here. The best thing to do is to carry on exploring this place, Holmes. It is the chimney pipe. It has been cut. Interesting. This stall is a washroom. I can see water basins inside. The door can be blocked from the outside. Interesting. Apparently, they are more interested in games than in cleanliness. Gallons of vodka. I pity the people who must have risked their lives in this attraction. This place must have been magnificent. Shh, Watson, look, on the stage, Prince Woodville. And it is with an immense pride that I take possession of the attributes of the crown and swear in front of you to serve my people with... Gentlemen, who are you? I don't believe I know you. We... Not as yet, Your Royal Highness, but I am overjoyed that you are familiar with the crowning ceremony. Of course. A good king should know it. 
That makes my duty so very much easier. Let me introduce myself. My name is Howard Sawbury, and I am in charge of the aforementioned protocol and the master of ceremonial events at Buckingham Palace. Um, yes, and I'm Sir John Cannard, in charge of... of the peacocks in the Royal Gardens. Congratulations, Sir John. Excellent imagination. I'm pleased to meet you, gentlemen, but what brings you here? Do you mean to say that no one has informed you? Have you not been in the city? It is Queen Victoria, of course. She has been dethroned. Really? So soon? According to my special advisor, Professor Moriarty, that should not take place until a few days from now. The people have decided otherwise, sir, and now they're calling for their new sovereign, the benevolent, most understanding Prince Woodville. Ah, gentlemen, you bring me great news. My good people have carried out their duty. I can finally take my rightful place, and happily before the bombs detonated. Actually, sir, we're here to warn you that you are in grave danger. What do you mean? Among your close advisers, I regret there are traitors who are already plotting against you. We have reliable information that these terrorists are part of an international anarchist network, and... Ah, gentlemen, I know who you are talking about. I'm sure you mean the strange gentleman employed by Professor Moriarty. Asians or, uh... Russians, sir. Whatever. These men must be stopped before their bombs explode. They're bombs? Yes, Sir John. Bombs placed all over London. I was not at all fond of the idea, but Professor Moriarty was quite adamant. Do you know where these bombs are precisely? Of course not. Uh, but I do know that those anarchists created their exploding devices here. You must tell us everything that you know about the bombs, sir. Why should I? You're not a pyrotechnist, are you? I must speak urgently with Professor Moriarty. Sir, these men, the Russian anarchists, I heard them plotting against you. They want to blow up the theatre, and you with it. That is madness. Why would they do that? Tell us everything that you know about the bombs, for we must defuse the one that is hidden here. I have not moved from here since I arrived, and no one apart from you has entered the theatre. You are lying, or you are their accomplices. We most certainly are not. That is enough. Leave me. They are dangerous anarchists who have committed murderous acts in their own country against the Tsar's line. That is impossible. The professor assured me of their loyalty. Moriarty does not require you any more, sir. He does not wish to give you the throne. He desires it for himself. The devil. Sir, we are going to help you. You must tell us where the bombs are planted. The people will never forget a sovereign who began his reign by saving his subjects from such atrocities. I confess that I do not know where they are, uh, but surely the Russian anarchists must know. What do the bombs look like? They appear very complicated. It is impossible to defuse them. I remember that they were put together here, in a wooden stall between two tents, next to the Russian caravans. They were the only ones who had a key, besides that traitor Moriarty, of course. We're going to try to open that stall. Wait, I, I demand an explanation. If everyone is plotting against me, then how do I know that you are not also party to the plot? But we... Bring me Professor Moriarty, Mr. Sawbury. Without delay, Sir John will remain here with me. I should be able to remove the prince without endangering Watson's life. These tangled ropes are holding back the curtains.
he's not moving. He appears to have passed out. But he could come around at any moment and sound the alarm. Yes, before leaving the theatre, we must make certain that that does not happen. Not so long ago, those words coming from you would have frozen my blood. Rest assured, my friend, that Sherlock Holmes no longer exists. Get rid of him now. There is a label underneath this lever. Magician's trap door, middle of the stage, exactly where the prince is standing. Hey, presto, it's magic. No more paranoid prince. Well done, Holmes. Look, Holmes, Prince Woodville lost his ring during the fight. There is an enormous diamond in the middle of this ring. I will give it to the police later. We must find the anarchists' bombs, Holmes. This magician has a leather belt, very solid. There is a small bag attached to it. What were these dummies at the front of the stage used for? The prince put them there to represent his public. It is the chimney pipe. It has been cut. Interesting. The illusionist smoke powder. Abracadabra. Magic powder and a metal plate. The revolutionaries won't resist it. Hide, Watson. Water! Water! The way is clear. I can hear the chinking of a bottle and talk in Russian. The three brothers are quietly getting drunk. Perfect. We must hurry, Holmes. Each chime tells us that the preparation of the poison soup is advancing. I'm coming, Watson. I just need to unblock the chimney. This caravan is as disgusting as the first one. A Russian-English dictionary. Wire! This piece of art shows the hatred the anarchists feel towards Prince Woodville and everything he represents.
The names of the targets are written in Russian and are unreadable, in my case, that is, and apparently the brothers have made notes before every name. This list has something to do with the dictionary open on the table. A small saw. We might need this. The dynamite shells are empty. A pity. Let's see. If these bombs explode, then I believe that the realm will be plunged into one of the gravest crises in its history. What are you going to do with this information, Holmes? Hand it across to Inspector Lestrade. How? By telephoning him. The haunted house is connected to the telephone exchange. I'm going to try to slip in there discreetly. Shall I accompany you? You can help me to get in, but while I search for the telephone, you should collect as much information as you can about the bombs. The explosive experts at Scotland Yard will need it. Understood. This ladder is only held back. This ladder is not too heavy. I can carry it. This ladder is not too heavy. I can carry it.
I could saw through the bars, being careful to create a passage wide enough. A good idea to use the diamond in the ring, Holmes. Exact I remind you of the monkey that stole the necklace, do I? Well done, Holmes. It's open. It's time for me to go into the beast's lair. Watson, I have no idea how long it will take me to locate the telephone. Use the time to try to get into the stand where the bombs were put together. I'm on my way. I'll join you later. The place is calm, thanks to the supply of vodka in the washroom. The anarchists probably haven't even noticed that they're locked in. Lard! Were they really going to eat that? The fire in this stove hasn't been put out, and now it's overheating. It must be stopped quickly. It's too hot. I'll burn my hand. Lard. A large dry cloth. There's no point in going there. Ah, there must be water here. It's too hot. Lard. That's of no use. Oh, it was time. Lard. A key. Locked. Very pretty Russian dolls. Let's see if there's something inside. A key. Whittling wooden objects seems to be a passion of one of the brothers. After building explosive devices, of course. It's an ornately carved toy chest. According to the name marked on it, it belongs to a certain Alexei. And it's locked by a key. A pretty spinning top. A bag of marbles. They're marvellous. A clock's hand. Strange handymen, these anarchists. A Cyrillic letter with a strange symbol.
I've already seen this symbol on a piece of paper I found inside the anarchist's chest. It's not very difficult after all. Another three cards full of poison soup. I must hurry. So it's here that the three anarchists made their bombs. But what a mess. Very well, I don't have any choice. If I want to understand how they work, I will have to build one. A crowbar. Locked. Sticks of dynamite. Here's the bench for assembling the explosive devices. There's something here. A plan for Russian bombs on a Japanese origami to blow up key places in England. <laughs> Very cosmopolitan. This plan shows the steps to follow for building a bomb. Sticks of dynamite. This box contains a jumble of radio receivers and boxes of copper wire. Apparently, the radio is plugged in. Whoops, the switch doesn't work. Don't panic, John. All you need to do is to find another way to defuse it. The best thing will be for me to go to the merry-go-round with my bomb. I'll take the bomb with me. Oh, it's heavy. This control panel doesn't work. Thanks to this radar, I can perhaps disconnect my bomb. Thank you. 
Oh, my God. Now I understand. The antenna on the merry-go-round controls all the bombs that the Russian brothers made. The control panel. It works! Thanks to this, I think we can now disconnect all the bombs that have been spread around London. And mine, too. The control panel. It works! Thanks to... We can branch a telephone here to call Lestrade. I must warn Holmes. There is nothing interesting here. I'm going to throw a marble at the window, which will attract Holmes's attention if he's there. Holmes isn't there. Let's try another window. I'm going to throw a marble at the window, which will attract Holmes's attention if he's there. Holmes isn't answering. It would be better to wait until he reaches the room where the telephone is. This room is clean and well kept. What a contrast to the filth throughout the rest of the fair. That could be useful. That could be useful. A magnificent hunting rifle. This glass cabinet is locked, but I should be able to force the lock. A magnificent... A key. I know this book. The Dynamics of an Asteroid. It is the reference book written by Moriarty. I must be in his bedroom. These paintings are extremely precious. They are the original works of great masters. This chest is the same as Ferguson the Magician's. I can't do that. A doll. It is new. It was bought recently. The Funfair's Act of Transfer, signed by that poor Ferguson. Moriarty didn't spare him, anyway. This pin could be useful.
This weapon is unusable. The hammer is missing. One can never be too careful. Here is everything to take care of this magnificent rifle. This place has been fitted out as a command center and as living quarters for Moriarty. Very well. Everything will be done as you wish. Above all, don't get impatient. I'll do the necessary. Moriarty is here. Apparently he is very busy. And this is curious. He seems to be obeying his interlocutor. Moriarty is a hired hand? These shelves seem solid. Wooden skeleton, nice element of decor. If I attach the rope here, I can go down without being seen. I need something. It would be better not to go down there. Now I can go down. These parts... It is rusty. If I turn the wheel, it is possible that the mechanism's squeaking will alert Moriarty. There are wooden partitions, rather thick and very heavy. They must have moved around to disorientate visitors, back when this attraction was in operation.
I need something. I can't do that. I need something. I need something. Closed. Another bell ringing in the warehouse. That is not a good sign. Let's hurry. Ah, here is the famous telephone. South London Exchange. What number do you want? 1313. Scotland Yard. Please hurry. One moment. Lestrade here. It's Sherlock Holmes. Holmes! You're alive! An excellent deduction, Lestrade. Now listen to me carefully. I'll get straight to the point. Moriarty has had four bombs placed around London, all of which could go off at any moment. You absolutely must find them and defuse them. How can I believe what you say? You are being hunted by all the police in the kingdom. They were looking for me, yes, but not any longer. You called off the search when my death was announced. Logically, why would I call you if I was not innocent? You must begin the search for those bombs straight away. That's true enough. So where are the bombs? Buckingham Palace, the House of Commons, the Bank of England, and as for the last one, it is entirely possible that you are sitting on it. Scotland Yard? Yes. Mobilise all your men and find them, but don't touch them without the defusing instructions. Luckily, those locations are already under heavy police guard. What are the defusing instructions? I don't have the details at present, but Watson is working on it. Stay near the telephone. I'll call you back the instant we find out. Curious. I can hear something tapping at regular intervals against the shutters. Watson. 
Watson? I think I know what we must do in order to defuse the bombs, Holmes. Good work, Watson. Yes, well, no, not really, because the bomb I have with me, the... Ah, I think I understand. How do you always manage to get yourself into these situations? I didn't really have any choice in the matter. It's primed, isn't it? I'm afraid so, and I need you to stop it. Perfect. We need to go to the merry-go-round. Can you bring the telephone with you? Well, I hope you know what you are doing. You'll understand when you see the control panel installed under the merry-go-round. But please hurry, I really would like to get rid of this infernal device. On the contrary, we must keep a careful hold of it. We are going to use it to destroy the warehouse where the soup is made. Step aside, I am going to jump. Quite simply, Holmes, the bombs all have a switch that allows them to be defused. But it's not as simple as that, is it? No, of course not. The bombs are also linked up with the merry-go-round's antenna by a radio frequency. And that wavelength is a security to stop the switches on the bombs from operating. Therefore, they must be disconnected from the merry-go-round. But that's not all. If no one switches them off, they will explode anyway. So that is why you need the telephone. We need to call Lestrade to tell him when to turn off the switches. Well done, Holmes. You have understood. You are reversing the roles, Watson. Highly amusing. <laughs> well, we can laugh about it later, but now we must hurry. First of all, we must plug in the telephone. First of all, we must plug in the telephone. Perfect. Hurry up, Holmes. Buckingham has been switched off. Scotland Yard has been switched off. The Bank of England has been switched off. Parliament has been switched off. That's it, Holmes. The bombs are disconnected. You can use the switches now. Let's hide, Holmes. The bombs were due to explode five minutes ago. You, go and get the anarchists and take them to the warehouse. Stay there. 
I'm going to the warehouse to check on the soup. Let's get out of here. Holmes, where are we going? Watson, what do you intend to do with that primed bomb at your feet? My God, there's not much time left. It would certainly be more useful elsewhere. Come, let us go, and let us try not to ruin the last chance we may have to save London. The guards have deserted the door. Now's our chance. Holmes, I don't think that I told you about this siren. No, but I can guess that it carries some connection with the poison soup. Without going into too much detail, the next time that it sounds, the carts will leave to stock up Prince Woodville's network throughout London. And it will be impossible to prevent the population from being poisoned. We must hurry. Moriarty's men are looking for us. The soup production is nearly finished and I am carrying a prime bomb in my hands. Quick, jump into the cable car. Uh-oh. There they are! Hey! Hey! They've seen us! There they are, boss, in the cable car. The esteemed Sherlock Holmes, back among the living. I am afraid that your resurrection can only be a temporary one at best. Have we ever been in such a perilous situation before? Very rarely, I must admit. Well, gentlemen, what are you waiting for? Are you afraid, Holmes? <laughs> the bomb is on the point of exploding. Moriarty's men can't shoot us like rabbits or restart the cable car and catch us on the warehouse roof. We are trapped. Moriarty wants us alive. That much is evident. So let us take advantage of the few minutes we have left. Perfect. I understand, Holmes. Fine. Leave everything. What are you doing, Holmes? The manual emergency system is behind this trap door. It works. We are safe here. Yes, there are only a few seconds left before... <laughs> My God, what a shock! Moriarty! He was in the warehouse. This time, it's over, Holmes. The mysterious person whom Moriarty appears to obey. 
whoever could be powerful enough to command Moriarty. The doors are wide open. Perhaps we are too late. I don't think so. What should we do next, Holmes? Don't touch that door! Get back! Damn you, Holmes! Damn you! So, you survived the explosion. Professor, put down your gun. I am going to examine your wounds. Don't come any closer. <coughs> I don't need a doctor. It is over, Moriarty. You have failed. Not entirely. Your death will lessen the defeat. We have failed, Holmes. You and I. In that case, I cannot imagine that you would refuse to answer the last question of the condemned. <laughs> A question? You can ask it of the devil, Holmes. Is Shieldman immune to his own poison? What? Don't leave her alone, Holmes. <coughs> I always try to do my best for her. <coughs> Only you are worthy to teach her. Take her. I don't know if my feelings could ever equal those of my friend. But as he walked off into the night, carrying that little girl in his arms, I confess that I had never seen him so moved. Holmes became the child's father. He gave her a gentle but exacting education. finally realized, thank 
thanks to this child, the simple happiness that life could bring, and also something that had previously always escaped him, love.